HRC, 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 HRC. Hebrew reader, Hebrew reader, Hebrew reader, church. Shout out to the Talon family. Welcome to Hebrew Readers Church. I'm your brother, Zachlaw, and with me is brother, Kasifo. We have a great lesson lined up for everybody today, the spirit of anger. Uh, we hope everybody has your drink and your food, because this lesson is going to be a little extensive, but it's going to be great. And it's going to be great edification. It's going to help a higher willing. Um, brother Kasifo, you want to say hello? Hello. Peace be with y'all. <laughs> That's right, man. All right. Let's go ahead and get going. We're going to jump into Barnabas, the book of Barnabas, chapter 19, verse 6, to start off. Barnabas, chapter 19, verse 6. The accidents that befall thee, thou shalt receive as good, knowing that nothing is done without Allah Hayyam. So the accidents that befall you, thou shalt receive as good. We have to receive it. That means that that's our viewpoint, our perspective. We have to receive it as good. Although it's something that may have happened that doesn't seem good because it's an accident, we still have to receive it and view it as good, knowing that nothing is done without Allah. And we have to know that. And we have to keep that within our souls. And that's what's going to help us when it comes to the spirit of anger to keep us away from vexation. And we're going to learn about what vexation is. Uh, can we first find out what anger is and the goal when dealing with anger? So let's start moving forward so that we can actually start understanding. Uh, can we jump into Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26? And I'm going to get the definition for anger as well. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Now, anger is G3710. It's to provoke or enrage that is passively become exasperated. Be angry or wroth. Now, I said, be ye angry and sin not. So, in this journey, we're going to get upset. We're going to get angry about something. But the scriptures tells us to be angry and sin not. If we go into the precepts, it says, um, sit upon thy bed. So, if we get angry, go sit down. Go gather yourself so that then you can actually start moving forward and actually get through it. And that's the goal for us when we first coming into it and when we're progressing is to be angry and don't operate in the anger. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Now, this is very important. Let's find out what wrath is first, Brother Kasifal, if you don't mind, before I explain it. Sure. Wrath, G2372. Passion, as if breathing hard. Fierceness, indignation, wrath. So if we get upset or we get angry, we're not supposed to sin in that anger. Then we're not supposed to let the sun go down upon our wrath. So we're not supposed to stay in a passion or an emotion for, for what? What happens if we stay in that emotion or that passion? Can you continue reading, Brother Council, please? In verse 27, neither give place to the devil. Neither give place to the devil. So if we stay in that anger or, and we stay in that passion, and it continues and it festers throughout the night into the next day, 
we give place for the devil to then come and attack us. So our feelings or emotions give place to the devil, grieving the Holy Spirit. And that's the part we're going to come into a little bit later. It's how those passions and that anger grieve the spirit. It grieves the Holy Spirit. So right now, let's understand how anger gives place to the devil. We're going to look at Cain for an example today. And we're going to see what transpired with him to give place to the enemy. Let's learn. And let's see Cain's mistakes so we can learn from them and that we may not fall to the same. Brother Kapasa, can we start in Genesis chapter 4, verse 3, if you don't mind? Sure, Genesis chapter 4, verse 3. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto Ahia, and Abel he also brought of the firstling of his flock and of the fat thereof, and Ahiah had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. It says Ahiah didn't have respect for Cain and his offering. Why did Elohim not have respect for Cain himself? Now, that's a really good place to touch on. And we're going to get to it. We're going to get to why Elohim didn't have respect for Cain. And for his offering, we know that Cain brought forth inferior fruit. That's why Elohim didn't accept it. But what was going on with Cain that Elohim didn't respect? Now, we get to see, if we continue reading, if you don't mind finishing it off, Brother Cosmo. Sure. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. Right. So, we have Yache. This is who was before Cain. He didn't have respect for Cain, and he didn't have respect for Cain's offering. Now, for Cain, we see his countenance fail when Elohim didn't have that respect for him. He became wroth. Casa, can we figure out what wroth is real quick before we go into it real quick, please? Sure. Wroth is H2734. It means to be hot, furious, burn, become angry, be kindled, to be angry with. Be incensed to heat oneself in vexation. In the Strong's definition, to glow or glow warm, figuratively, usually, to blaze up, to blaze up of anger, zeal, or jealousy, to be angry, displeased, fret self. Grieve, be hot, wax hot, kindle, be wroth. Right. So we have two things going on with Cain once he wasn't respected and his offering wasn't respected. He fell into anger and he fell into sorrow. Now, the, the reason why Elohim didn't respect Cain it's because Cain was operating in self-will. So because things didn't go the way that Cain wanted it to go, it gave place to anger and sorrow. This is why our desires have to be according to the law of Elohim and not of our own law, which is there's only two laws, as we're going to find out. And we can't give place to idolatry. One side is Elohim's law and the other side is the devil's. There's no gray area. Let's understand idolatry and come back and see what happens to Cain after that. 
So let's jump into the Testament of Judah chapter 17 so we can get more insight into Cain's situation. If you don't mind reading, Brother Kasifo. Testament of Judah chapter 17 verse 2. Beware therefore, my children, of fornication. Can we get the definition of fornication, please? G4202. Harlotry, including adultery and incest. Figuratively, idolatry. So we get to see that fornication isn't only in the physical, but fornication is also in the spiritual as well. It's idolatry. So hearkening to spirits that are not the Holy Spirit or not Yahweh, when you hearken unto unclean spirits or you hearken unto the angel of wickedness, you actually fall into idolatry. Can we continue reading, Brother Kasafu? Sure. Beware therefore, my children, of fornication and the love of money, and hearken to Judah, your father, for these things withdraw you from the law of Allah Hayim. Right. So we have idolatry, and we also have lust, which is the love of money. So these two things withdraw you from the law of Allah Hayim. And that's the whole point. The whole point of idolatry, the whole point of anger, the whole point of all these spirits is to draw us away from the law of Allah Hayim. And to bring us under the bondage of the law of the devil. Because there's only two. There's the law of Allah and the fruits of the spirit that you bring forth from his law. And that's the law of the devil that brings forth the works of the flesh. That you bring forth from his law. There's only two sides. So let's understand. We have to understand that these things, this is their whole purpose, is to withdraw us from the law of Allah. And we have to be on guard of that to make sure we hold fast to the law so that it may keep us from the attacks of any other spirit that comes against us, trying to war against us. Brother Kasifo, you got something? I was just in the agreement with you. We're on the right track. Because remember, Dan said, wrath ever laideth such in lawlessness. Mm -hmm. well, wrath literally helps. That's its its motive to push us to lawlessness away from the law. All right, we're about to get there, too. A little bit further down, but we're going to get there. <laughs> so how do these spirits, how do they withdraw us from the law of Allah? Can we continue reading, Brother Kassel? Yes, sir. And blind the inclination of the soul. And blind the inclination of the soul. Brother Costa, can we get the definition of inclination, please? Sure. Inclination is a person's natural tendency or urge to act or feel in a particular way, a disposition. Right. So, seeing that we are the image of Allah Hayyam, and that Allah Haim is our maker. He's the one that created us. Our inclination is to Allah Haim first. That's what the conscience is for. We have that conscience because we're going against Allah Haim's law. When we start paying heed, a hearkening unto idols, it blinds us from that natural inclination. And that's where the blindness comes in. It's because those spirits, that's their purpose, is to withdraw us from the law of Allah. So they have to blind us. They have to blind our inclination for us to then hearken unto them. So you see the two laws playing against one another. So it blinds you from hearing the angel of righteousness. And whose works do you adhere to after you're blinded, after your inclination is blinded? Can you continue reading, Brother Katha, please? And teach arrogance. And teach arrogance. So the first one that comes is arrogance to lift yourself up. And you're lifting yourself up against Allah Hayyam. 
because you're withdrawing from the law of Elohim. What does it say about pride, Brother Kasafo? Pride is the beginning of when one departeth from Elohim and his heart is turned away from his maker. So now you understand that arrogance has to come first because the pride has to withdraw you from Elohim and from the law so that you are susceptible to hearkening to the evil spirits. And what happens next, Brother Kasifo? It goes on to say, and suffer not a man to have compassion upon his neighbor. So because you're lifted up, you can't see anyone else. All you can see is yourself. It doesn't matter what anyone else has going on. It's about me. And continue, Brother Castle. What else happens? They rob his soul of all goodness. So, oh, the, wow. so the spirit are gone. I'm sorry. Righteousness is gone. The law of Elohim is gone. <laughs> go, go ahead, Brother Castle. It just came to mind when you said that how it doesn't suffer to have compassion upon his neighbor, that it's all about me. That's self-will. Self-will is self-pleasing. Right. Self-conceit. It's vainglory. It's selfish, according to the right. definitions. Like So you can see all them spirits of pride, they get to work and right there. Yeah. Wow. Right at the beginning. That's the yeah. only way. That's why Elohim didn't have respect unto Cain. Because the self-will, the arrogance. These spirits were already working in Cain. That's why Elohim didn't have respect for him. He was already going away from the law of Elohim by his offering. He brought forth inferior fruit when Elohim had already commanded him to give the best fruits. He was already going away from the law of Elohim. Good to you, Brother Cotton. You were really right. They rob his soul of all goodness, and the fruits of the Spirit is in all goodness. So he was really in and a tough truth. place. Yeah. Right. Continuing. And oppress him with toils and troubles. And oppress him with toils and troubles. So now you toss to and fro. You're just getting tossed around. Evil spirits, one jumping on you, the next jumping on you. It's, it, it's just like you're just getting, you're getting jumped. You're getting beat up by whichever one is, is the dominant at that time. That's what's considered mental health issues today, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. The frenzies, the racing thoughts, mind not resting. <laughs> this is what the scriptures is talking about. The anxiety. Yeah. And drive away sleep from him and devour his flesh. And he hindereth the sacrifices of Allah Hayyam. So it's driving the sleep away from you because you can't get a grip on it. And it devours your flesh because then you're not nourishing your flesh. Mentally, you're struggling. So you so mentally you stop eating. You stop taking care of yourself because you're trying to get a grip on everything. And then it hinders the sacrifices of Alahayim. So your prayers are hindered. And we're gonna touch on that a little bit later because that goes into some some very, very key things that we need to understand for us to really understand everything that's happening right now. We're going to touch on it very slightly, but then we're going to really delve into it in a moment. Um, can we go to the Shepherd Hermes Mandate 9 so that we can get a little bit of understanding on why our sacrifices are hindered, why our prayers are hindered? Sure. Shepherd Hermes Mandate 9. And if after asking anything of the Lord, thou receive thy petition somewhat tardily, be not of doubtful mind, because thou didst not receive the petition of thy soul at once. For assuredly, it is by reason of some temptation or some transgression, of which thou art ignorant, that thou receivest thy petition so tardily. 
So it says, by reason of some temptation or some transgression, of which thou art ignorant. Now, you remember that it blinds the inclination of the soul. And that's what fornication and lust does. It blinds the inclination of the soul. So for a lot of people that operate in anger, they can't get a grip on it because it's blinding. You're operating in ignorance. If you actually understood what was working against you, you wouldn't operate in anger. You wouldn't allow the anger to, to have place in you. But because you don't understand it, you're ignorant to it. And that's how it has place in you. Because you don't understand. There's so many different things going on that it feels like it, it doesn't make sense. But it does. And we're going to get to it. We have to be on guard when our desires don't align with Allah law. Because these spirits want to get us alone in spirit and in the physical so that they can have their way with us. Can we continue in um, the Testament of Judah? Brother Kasa, please. Bro, Testament of Judah, chapter 17, verse 5, continuing. And he remembered not the blessing of Allah Hayim. And he remembered not the blessing of Allah Hayim. So he doesn't remember the good things. All he remembers is the bad. His soul is robbed of all goodness. Remember, if not the blessings of Allah. Did you have a scripture on that, Brother Kafafo? Yeah, in Acts 3 and 26, it said, Unto you first, Elohim, having raised up his son Yache, sent him to bless you, in turning away every one of you from his iniquities. So, this attack from anger and fornication and these spirits of pride at work hinders us from seeing the blessing of our faults being revealed. So we will take offense to a fault being revealed or we will get down about it or go into sorrow. Our countenance will fall like it happened with Cain. We'll get down or offended right. about it. And that takes us right to Barnabas, uh, was it 19 and 6? Because if we were looking, if we had that perspective that all things were coming from Allah, then that would help alleviate us from going down this path. So one, you're darkened by the idolatry. You can't remember any good things. Therefore, any emotion, especially anger, can lead you astray to serving idols. Can we continue in um Testament of Judah, Brother Casa, please? Sure. Continuing in Testament of Judah, chapter 17, verse 5. He hearkeneth not to a prophet when he speaketh. And resenteth the words of holiness. Right. So he can't hearken to a prophet because he's blinded. He's darkened. Just like Yache said, you can't serve two masters. So either he'll hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. So you resent the words of holiness, and you can't hearken to a prophet when they speak because you're struggling in darkness, and the enemy becomes Yache. Wow. And Yache is in the prophet. Yache is in the words of holiness because it's his law. The words of holiness is his law. His spirit is in those words. So when you're darkened, you're not serving Yache. You're serving the other law. Therefore, Yache is against you. So that's where that resentment comes in. Can you continue, Brother Kasa? Sure. 
verse six, for he is a slave to two contrary passions. So he is a slave to two contrary passions that we just read in Matthew 6 and 24. You can't serve two masters. So you're a slave of two contrary passions. That means that you're serving the law of the devil and you're trying to serve the law of Elohim and they're colliding with one another. And what does the testament of Judah go on to say, Brother Kassafa? And he cannot obey Allah because they have blinded his soul, and he walketh in the day as in the night. And you cannot obey Allah because they have blinded your soul. So once these spirits blind you, especially anger, fornication, lust, self-will, once these spirits blind you, you can't see. And you walketh in the day as in the night. Everything is flipped upside down. And you can't see or write. The things that are good, you look at bad. And the things that are bad, you look at as good. And we're going to get into this thing. I mean, we're we're just we're just touching the nail of it, but we're about to open it up. So let's see what happened to Cain, having this little bit of understanding. Let's understand what was going on with Cain. Uh, we're in Genesis 4 and 6, Brother Kassifu. Genesis chapter 4, verse 6. And Ahia said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? And why is thy countenance fallen? So why are you going into anger and why are you going into sorrow? Go ahead, Brother Kassim. If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. All right, let's understand what Allah was saying to him. Allah was saying, so if you adhere to the law and turn from what you feel is right and submit yourself unto Allah, unto me, you'll be accepted. And if you don't choose that path, sin is at the door because the evil spirits were already present. He was already falling mentally into the spirit of anger and of sorrow. They had already entered into his mind. Cain needed to make a choice in that very instance. And many of us, we fall and we have the same situation, even as Cain, that when that moment, that we really need to make a choice and, and cleave unto Allah and cleave unto the law to save us from going or falling into whatever spirit it is that's attacking us. We don't understand the timing of that decision that needs to be made. Cain needed to make a choice in that very instance of what he was going to choose because we have to stop the evil spirits in our heads first before they enter our hearts. So when the thought comes, that's when we need to stop it and not allow it to fester to enter into our hearts. Because when it enters into our hearts, it's too late. Thank you for that edification with seeing explaining what was going on. Well, thank Allah for giving you understanding of that edification to what's going on with Cain yeah. because, because I can see how that happens where, you know, a fit comes, but hastiness will get me. I'll be hasty to brush it off and not really stop and deal with this thing to get to the truth of it. And a hastiness of spirit, Gad mentioned how the devil works with hastiness of spirit. And Naphtali mentioned how be not eager to corrupt 
yourselves through covetousness. No vain words to beguile your soul. So I can see how the eagerness and covetousness gets me to not stop and actually deal with the thought or to rush the brush the thought off and not truly, hey, no, this isn't right. Stop that completely and get away from it and pay attention after it came. I go forward hastily and then I get God because I wasn't temperate. So to pay attention what to that. What you're saying? What? We're literally, we're going to go into exactly what you're saying, too. Yeah. You know, I'm throwing all these things out so that everybody can kind of get an understanding of where we're going before we actually really delve into everything, like, very, very um, elaborately. Okay. So that everybody's kind of familiar. It's kind of like putting your feet in the water before you actually jump in. Okay. That's right. All right. We're going to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30, and we're going to touch on the Holy Spirit and Elohim. When I was speaking about how the Holy Spirit, how it hinders our sacrifices, the Elohim, we're going to understand when these evil spirits come and enter into our hearts, what actually happens with the Holy Spirit. Let's go ahead and go into Ephesians 4 and 30, Brother Cossiphal. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of Allah, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. All right. So for us as believers, we have to have the Holy Spirit in order to seal us for, for redemption. That's important. That's why when the apostles, after they would baptize someone, they would give them the seal of the Holy Spirit because you need it for redemption. Now, let's find out what the Holy Spirit dwells in so that we can actually understand why our prayers are hindered. Uh, can we go to Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1, verse 1, please? Sure. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 1. Love righteousness, ye that be judges of the earth. Think of the Lord with a good heart, and in simplicity of heart, seek him. For he will be found of them that tempt him not, and showeth himself unto such as do not distrust him. All right, so let's touch on that real quick. It says, he will be found of them that tempt him not. Now, let's use Cain as an example. Cain understood what Allah desired. He knew that he was supposed to bring superior fruit. But Cain brought inferior fruit anyway. What tempts Allah? Self-will. So we have to be very on guard for self-will that we're not operating according to what we may view as our own law, but actually walking according to the law of Elohim. Because there's only two laws, so there's no such thing as our own law. But we have to be mindful because that's how we view it a lot of times. Or we may not view it that way. We may just think, I'm walking according to my own passion or how I feel. But it's still your own law. And it's contrary to Allah Haim's law. And show of himself unto such as do not distrust him. So we show that we trust Allah Haim by keeping his commandments. We show that we trust Allah Haim by believing that what he say is going to save us and what he's saying is right. And that's why we hold fast to the commandments because we trust them. We believe them. Continue, Brother Kassel. Verse three, for forward thoughts separate from Allah. Oh, that's forward. I thought I said it, man. It's my accent said forward. <laughs> i tried man <laughs> let me try again sorry for, for, 
for four for man for four for the man for four <laughs> for for forward thoughts separate from Alahaya and his power when it is tried. I'm gonna read it, man. Yeah. I'm a reader, man. <laughs> <laughs> for forward thoughts separate from Elohim and his power when it is tried reproveth the unwise <laughs> uh, can you get the definition of forward Casa, so we can understand what that word means please <laughs> Sure. Hold on one sec. I gotta find that. Perverse or fraud. Yeah. I got the Hebrew definition distorted from H6141. Distorted. Interesting. Distorted. Hence, false. Crooked, forward, perverse. The English definition of forward is of a person difficult to deal with. Contrary. Let's tie this in. Let's tie this in with Cain because he didn't have respect for Cain, right? What separated Cain from Elohim? Because you get to see the Cain's thoughts. His thoughts were not unto the law of Elohim. His thoughts were unto himself, or what he thought was himself. So you can see the perverseness of Cain. You can see it was in his mind. And when the thoughts entered his mind, it entered into his heart, because he never stopped them. So you can see the thoughts separate you from Elohim because that's what the evil spirits are trying to do. That's why they're attacking you. And his power, when it is tried, reproveth the unwise. And that's what happened to Cain. When he tried Elohim and brought forth that inferior fruit, he got reproved. Right. You touched on Cain knew the law because we know they understood like Abel knew the law because he brought the first thing of his flock, like the law said. The other definition right. for thanks. The other definition for forward was willful and disobedient. Forward. Ah. Forward. forward. Ah, man. Forward. <laughs> forward. <laughs> no, it ain't made for everybody, man. <laughs> what was the definition? <laughs> the definition of that word. <laughs> <laughs> the definition of that word is willful and disobedient. <laughs> yes. Cain was willful, which is self-will, and he was disobedient. Because he didn't hold fast to the law of Elohim. As we continue, it's going to get very interesting the things that are needed to overcome the spirit of anger. And once we really start delving in, delving into the spirit itself. Can we continue, Brother Castle, for him, uh, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 4, please? Sure can. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 4. For into a malicious soul, wisdom shall not enter, nor dwell in the body that is subject unto sin. Hmm. Can we get the definition of malicious, please? Sure. G4190. Hurtful, that is, evil. Properly in effect or influence. Calamitous, also ill, that is, diseased. But especially morally culpable, that is, derelict, vicious, fascinorous, mischief, malice, guilt the devil or sinners bad evil grievous harm lewd malicious 
wicked wickedness. So we see through the definitions into a malicious soul. If we're operating in any of those characteristics, then the Holy Spirit is not going to enter in the first place. So we have to work on getting past those. If that's a struggle, getting past those spirits so that we can actually start allowing the Holy Spirit to dwell. Nor dwelleth in a body that is subject to sin. So just like Cain, we can't be operating in self-will for the Holy Spirit to dwell with us. It said, nor dwell. It doesn't say that she doesn't come in and leave. It says that she doesn't dwell there. She doesn't stay there. So we have two different things. We have a malicious soul where wisdom doesn't enter in at all. Then we have the body that is subject to sin where the Holy Spirit doesn't dwell there. She doesn't stay. So we have to make sure that we're not operating maliciously, which is hurtful, whether to others or to ourselves. Because that means that the devil has a place in us. That's why the definition says the devil. Bad, evil, grievous, harm, lewd. We have to stay away from that altogether so that the Holy Spirit may enter into us. And then we can't be subject to sin. We can't be subject to hearkening unto evil spirits or idolatry or fornication so that the Holy Spirit may dwell with us. You got anything on that, Brother Cosmo? I thought you spake on a well. The spirit of anger and sorrow brought sin to the door of Cain. Right. So if we want to be a body where the Holy Spirit can dwell and remain, we have to be mindful not to give in to the passions, emotions, and sorrow so that she can actually dwell there. Because now we know through the precepts, sin is going to be sitting right at the door and the Holy Spirit, she doesn't abide there. All right. Can we continue to the wisdom of Solomon chapter 1, verse 5, please? Verse 5. For the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit. Can we get the definition of deceit, please? Sure. It's 4820. In the sense of deceiving, fraud, craft, Deceit, deceitful, deceitfully, false, feign, guile, subtlety, treachery. Right. Well, the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee from deceit. So we have another thing that the Holy Spirit will depart from. So we start operating in guile. If we start operating in deceiving somebody, then the Holy Spirit is going to depart again because she doesn't dwell with that spirit either. Go ahead, Casa. Even if we're not being honest with ourselves, she won't be there. Right. If we're not speaking truth in our heart, even when an accident happened that befalls us, to not see it as good and be honest like, hey, Take accountability. I did that. I just hogging to an idol. I sinned. I'm sorry. Like we're being deceitful if we're trying not to take accountability or try and point the blame on everybody else as to why we fell. She wouldn't be there with us. It's gonna make sense later on in the lesson. <laughs> mm -hmm. So now we're learning all these things. We're learning where the Holy Spirit dwells and where the Holy Spirit doesn't dwell, and when the Holy Spirit departs. Now, 
It said that she flees deceit. What else does she flee from, Kasafo? And remove from thoughts that are without understanding. So we see what happened to Cain. He didn't stop the thoughts with the law and became a servant unto sin. And then the Holy Spirit departed. She's removed from thoughts that are without understanding. And the understanding is the law. Because yeah. Cain didn't hold fast to the law, the Holy Spirit departed. We're learning here today. Ahaya yeah. Woolen. He said, through thy precepts, I get understanding. You talked about taking the time to know like in that moment to stop there and see what's going on make that choice god said seek ye the judgments of the lord and your mind will be at rest mm -hmm. like <laughs> real deal like hold on i gotta go see i need to see a precept to make sure my thoughts are in understanding now look at this it says she flees deceit and remove from thoughts that are without understanding, right? So first the thought comes, right? Now, the only thing that can combat the thought is the law. And if you don't combat the thought, what happens, Kasafo? Can we continue reading? And will not abide when unrighteousness cometh in. And when unrighteousness cometh in into your heart, she is gone. So when the evil spirits enter the man or woman's heart, the Holy Spirit leaves, and he or she, soul, is blinded and walketh in the day as in the night. So let's see what we're exhorted to do to keep our souls pure and what to look out for. Can we go to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31, please? Ephesians 4 and 31. Let all bitterness. Can we get the definition for bitterness? We're learning today. Right. Bitterness is anger and disappointment and being treated unfairly. Resentment. So... This is one of the spirits we got to stay away from. Anger and disappointment at being treated unfairly, resentment. We have to stay away from that because we're, we're given unto the thought that's going to let the Holy Spirit depart. And we don't want that to enter into our hearts. What else, Brother Kasafo? And wrath. Right, and we went into wrath, which is a passion. So we have to stay away from those emotions and that indignation or that fierceness that comes to try to get us angry or try to get us in whatever other emotion that's going to cause us to sin. What else, Brother Kasafo? And anger. All right, let's get the definition of anger. Anger G3709. Properly desire as a reaching forth or excitement of the mind. That is, by analogy, violent passion, ire, or justifiable abhorrence. By implication, punishment, anger, indignation, vengeance, wrath. So anger, properly desire. Because the only way that anger enters in is if it's from a desire that you have. Whether it be you don't want something to happen, whether it be that you're upset that something happened, it's all based off of your desire. And it stops you from serving Elohim. And we have to be strengthened. Our desires are unto Elohim. That's the difference between being zealous and being angry. We're zealous for the law, so we may have a passion for the law. But to be angry 
given over to that passion of the law that's contrary to us causes us to fall. So if we hold fast to the law, it will save us. Can you read the other definition for um for anger, if you don't mind, Brother Kassif? Sure. Say a definition, movement or agitation of the soul. Impulse. Desire, any violent emotion, but especially anger. Right. So you see, we keep on saying any emotion that leaves you away from Alahayim, because any violent emotion is anger. Agitation of the soul, you're agitated. Impulse, being hasty. All these are forms of anger. You got anything on that, Casa Fogo? Well, that's the truth. Naphtali said, be not eager through covetousness or with vain words to beguile your souls. These spirits work together with anger because anger is the most evil of evil spirits, according to Hermas, to get us out of the way with the quick quick reaction, quick thinking, quick feeling, intemperance. <laughs> so it's interesting. The quick reaction and the quick feeling, you're already in anger. Yeah. It's called being hasty, but really it's being hasty in anger in all truth. Yeah. What's the next one, Brother Casa? We coming back to this one because you remember I said that we had the definition later. Okay. And clamor. Can we get the definition, please? Sure. G2906, an outcry in notification, tumult, or grief. Clamor, cry, crying. So clamor is crying hysterically. This is one of the things we're supposed to stay away from. Does everybody know what hysterically means? Let me get the definition. I'm sure I'm looking it up. <laughs> With wildly uncontrolled emotion. Right. That's one of the things we're supposed to stay away from. An outcry. A notification of tumult or grief. Clamor crying. So we're not supposed to be crying hysterically. Uncontrolled crying. And evil speaking be put away from you. Okay. Let's go ahead and get the definition of evil speaking, please. Evil speaking is G988. Vilification, especially against Allah Hayyam. Blasphemy, evil speaking, railing. Okay. Let's go ahead and get the definition of vilification and railing, please. Vilification is abusively disparaging speech or writing. So technically tearing somebody down. So when you're speaking to them and you're saying things to tear them down, to hurt them. Go ahead. Railing. To revile or scold in harsh, insolent, or abusive language. All right. So that's not having compassion on your neighbor. You're just scolding them harshly, and you're not having no compassion on them. You're just giving it to them. Well, I can see how that affects even in a house or where... A child might get attacked to cry uncontrollably. And then the parent gets attacked to right. be harsh. Like, why don't you stop crying? You you know, you act, you know how it goes. Under right. Person. You see both of them getting attacked. Yeah. Or the agitation uh, of the song. Sorry. Right. No, you're good. 
Can we get the Thayer's definition of evil speaking, please? Sure. Slander, detraction, speech injurious to another's good name. All right, so you have lying reproaches. In this one, you have someone that's saying things that aren't true. That's why it's slander. They're just in the emotion and they're saying whatever comes to them and it doesn't matter if it's true or not. All these things are stemming from anger. They're violent passions. Go ahead, Brother Casa. Impious and reproachful speech, injurious to divine majesty. So then they start speaking reproachfully about Allah Hayyam. And though it may not be unto Allah Hayyam specifically, they speak against his law or they speak against a prophet or they speak against a, a righteous man or somebody trying to speak righteousness to them. They won't hearken unto it. And they'll speak against it in their anger. You mentioned, remember, Peter said in 2 Peter 2 and 10, but chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government. He was mentioning before, he's speaking of the heavenly government. Mm -hmm. Presumptuous are they, self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. All right. And now we see why. We see everything right here is right in the realm of anger. Everything. We have bitterness, which is an anger. We have wrath. We have anger itself. We have clamor. We have evil speaking. We have malice, which we're about to go into next. All these stem from anger. What's the last one, Brother Casa? With all malice. All right, let's get the definition of that one so we can keep rolling. G2549. Malignity, malice, ill will, desire to injure, wickedness, depravity. Wickedness, that is, not ashamed to break laws, evil, trouble. So we see malice, it's ill-willed, and it's wickedness that is not ashamed to break laws. So when malice enters in your heart, you're going to sin. And you may even hurt somebody. What does Ephesians 4 and 32 say? So we can get away from all that. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiven one another, even as Allah for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Let's put on those good things and let's cleave unto those things. Let's keep those things in our heart and our mind that we're not getting on to anger. So let's adhere to the law and the fruits of the spirit instead of the laws and works of the flesh of the enemy. All right, so let's jump into it. Now we're going to jump into anger. Let's really understand this thing so that we can stand aloof from it. We can stand away from it and that we can get the victory over it. We're about to go into it. I hope everybody's ready. Let's go. Um, <laughs> I was about to say, yeah. <laughs> let's go, man. Uh, we're going to go into the Testament of Dan chapter 2. We're going to read chapter 2, verse 2, and then we're going to jump around a little bit. Dan chapter 2, verse 2. For anger is blindness and does not suffer one to see the face of any man with truth. So first and foremost, just like we read before about how it blinds you and it blinds the inclination of the soul. So now we get to see anger is blindness. So when you fall into a fit of anger, or it enters into your mind and into your heart, it blinds you. It does not suffer one to see the face of any man with truth. All 
Let's jump into the Testament of Dan 4, verse 6. Chapter 4, verse 6. And if you suffer loss voluntarily or involuntarily, be not vexed. For from vexation arises wrath with lying. So that takes us back to Barnabas chapter 19, verse 6. That Barnabas chapter 19, verse 6 is going to help us with that vexation. It says, if you suffer loss voluntarily or involuntarily, be not vexed. Don't be vexed. Don't let vexation get to you. For from vexation arises wrath with lying. So the vexation actually allows it to enter into us. Kyle, we got the definition of vexation. We do. It is the state of being annoyed, frustrated, or worried. So when you get annoyed or frustrated or worried, you have to stop it. You have to stop it. Because if you don't stop it, it's only going to continue to grow. All right. So in regards to vexation, you have to really be mindful when you start talking to yourself. Like when you start building up that emotion and you, you're having that conversation with yourself. And it's sometimes I can't believe that person just did that. Oh, all oh, this happened. And you're sitting there, you're talking to yourself. That's the vexation. So you have to be very, very mindful of that and catch it when you're in it so that you can actually stop and say, man, okay, I'm in vexation right now. Let me be mindful. Let me be, let me focus. Let me think about what I need to do to come out of the vexation. For us, knowing that the accidents befall us, we should count it good, seeing that nothing is done without Alahayim. So for us, we have to be of that mindset that the things that are befalling us are good. And even when we come to a situation where the opportunity or the place for vexation has a place to enter, we have to be mindful of our mindset and what we're supposed to stay in and not allow it to drift us away or go to another mindset. So if we're believers, we have to behave as believers. We have to think as believers. We can't just be believers in word only. Kasi, you got anything on that? Paul said, do all things without murmurings. So that helps understand <laughs> some more uh, behind that commandment, not to murmur. Vexation carries into talking to ourselves, deliberating in our mind, disputing things in our mind, going into our own thoughts about it. So praising that is great to know. <laughs> Praise the and also the feeling of being overwhelmed is vexation as well, because it's part of frustration. So you have to be you have to be mindful of when you start feeling overwhelmed too and actually analyzing and looking at why am I feeling overwhelmed? Why is that feeling of overwhelmed coming on me? Where is it trying to lead me? Because it, it's the same vexation. Because if you give in to the overwhelm, then it's gonna take you somewhere else. Usually it's going to take you to sorrow or it's going to take you to anger. So you have to be really mindful of being frustrated. You know, that's one of the definitions of vexation. You have to be very, very mindful of any type of frustration, any annoyance, any worry. Once you start going into those things, you start falling into that vexation and you have to be very, very mindful and catch it before it's too late, before you then went down into a pit. You have to catch it and really stop it and hone in and really lock in to be able to combat it, you know, knowing that it's for our good. We have to have that mindset. And it's very, very essential for us to have that mindset and know that everything is good that befalls us. Because if we start looking at things negatively and we don't give place for the good, for the cheerfulness, then it gets placed for the other spirits as well, which cheerfulness is one of the things that we're going to attest that is needful for a servant of Allah Hayim, along with long suffering. And we're going to really go into those things in a moment. Um, Kasa, you got anything? 
Psalms 4 and 4 said, Stand in awe and sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. So it's great to know what the vexation is, even with the overwhelming. And it's helpful to know when I am in awe, frustration comes or the vexation is coming. I catch it. Don't sin. Stop. <laughs> be still. Commune with my own heart about finding the chair in it. Remembering that it's good. It's coming from Malahayim and long suffering. <laughs> me taking it in joy and stay still until I actually get there because I want to keep that faith perfect. So, and be still until I actually I'm back in that centered position of not being in any feelings or feeling overwhelmed before I move forward. So, great understanding. Thank you. Praise the higher. Praise the higher. You have to stop it because if you don't stop it, it's only going to continue to grow. From vexation ariseth wrath with lying. So you see, once that vexation starts going and it starts growing and then it enters into your heart, wrath and lying come right after it. Because you have to be blinded firstly. So you have to be lied to. The evil spirit has to lie to you so that you can be blinded. And once you believe the lie, then it can work in you. Can we read Dan chapter 2 verse 3 so we can understand how when anger comes in and it blinds you, it doesn't allow you to see the face of any man with truth because that vexation comes in with wrath and lying. Dan chapter 2 verse 3. For though it be a father or a mother, he behaveth toward them as enemies. Right. Though it be a brother, he knoweth him not. Though it be a prophet of the Lord, he disobeyeth him. Though a righteous man, he regardeth him not. Though a friend, he doth not acknowledge him. For the spirit of anger encompasseth him with the net of deceit, and blindeth his eyes, and through lying darkeneth his mind, and giveth him its own peculiar vision. So remember we talked about he walks in, in day as in night. You have your own peculiar vision. Everything gets flipped upside down. So now you become at war with Yache. The righteous man, you regard of him not. A prophet of the Lord, you disobey them. A friend, you don't even acknowledge him because you're angry. You can't see anything. Continue, Brother Casa. And wherewith encompasseth it his eyes. So what is in his eyes? What is he seeing? What encompasses his eyes? What is he seeing? Tell me. What is it that he is seeing? Go ahead, Brother Casa. With hatred of heart so as to be envious of his brother. With hatred of heart. So the hatred, hatred entered into his heart. So I have to be envious of his brother. Casa, can we get the definition of envy, please? Sure. H7068. Jealousy or envy? Zeal. So we see that a lot of times the anger comes in because of envy. You can't see anything because you're upset at where you are. You're upset with yourself. And for us, if anything befalls you, as 
Barnabas, chapter 19 and 6. The accidents that befall thee, thou shalt receive as good, knowing that nothing is done without Elohim. You have to be okay with where you are. You have to be okay if things happen to you. You have to have that understanding and that mind, no matter what comes your way, to stay temperate in all things and to know that Allah Hayyam is doing all things and behind all things. And that all we have to do is adhere and keep his law and bring forth fruit in it to keep us away from another law. And we're going to keep on going. And we definitely have admonitions to help us and to grow us. But right now, we're going to continue learning how these spirits start intertwining with one another when it comes to anger. And how anger, the way it works, it makes everything confusing. Because there's so many things going on at one time that you don't think it's anger. And we're about to dive into it and see how other spirits start cleaving unto this one spirit and they all start mingling and working together now seeing what's encompassing his eyes which is the hatred of heart so as to be envious of his brother how does envy operate the spirit itself how does envy operate brother Kasifo? It says in the Testament of Solomon, chapter 44, I, Solomon, on hearing this, sealed him, stretching out my hand against his chest, whereon the demon leapt up and threw himself down and gave a groan, saying, Woe is me, where am I come to, O traitor, or nice, I cannot see. So I said to him, I am Solomon, tell me then how thou dost manage to see. And he answered me, by means of my feelings. So you can see how it operates through its passion, through its feelings. The envy does. So you can see how they're intertwined. And we're about to learn how anger, hatred, and envy work together. Can we go to the uh, Testament of God, chapter 4, verse 1, please? Testament of God, chapter 4. Beware, therefore, my children, of hatred, for it worketh lawlessness even against the Lord himself. So it worketh lawlessness even against the Lord himself, because hatred is part of another law. It's not Elohim's law. It has its own law that it works in. Go ahead, Brother Gossip. But it will not hear the words of his commandments concerning the love of one's neighbor. And it sinneth against Allah. Hayyam. So hold on. So hatred in itself breaks the two greatest commandments. It breaks, thou shalt love Ahaya with all thy heart, all thy might, and all thy soul. And it breaks, thou shalt love thy brother as thyself. Right. Go ahead, Brother Cosmo. For if a brother stumble, it delighteth immediately to proclaim it to all men. Mm -hmm. And is urgent that he should be judged for it and be punished and be put to death. And if it be a servant, it stirreth him up against his master. And with every affliction it deviseth against him, if possibly he can be put to death. For hatred worketh with envy also against them that prosper. Aye. So long as it heareth or seeth their success, it always languisheth. So as long as they hear it of or see if their success, it always languishes. That means it doesn't go away. So as long as they're seeing you prosper or hearing of it, they can't get over it. Go ahead, Brother Costa. For as love would quicken even the dead, 
and will call back them that are condemned to die. So hatred would slay the living, and those that had sinned venially, it would not suffer to live. For the spirit of hatred worketh together with Satan through hastiness of spirit in all things to men's death. So we get to see that anger working because hastiness comes from anger. Go ahead, Brother Kasi. But the spirit of love worketh together with the law of Allah in long suffering unto the salvation of men. So we see the dichotomy. We get to see the hastiness, which is anger, which worketh with hatred and envy for Satan. And there we see a contrary law, the law of Allah contrary to that law, which worketh in long suffering and love. So we have the dichotomy. Keep going, Brother Kasi. Chapter 5. Hatred, therefore, is evil, for it constantly mateth with lying. So hatred and lying goes hand in hand, because first you have to be lied to through the vexation. The vexation comes first, and then the wrath and lying comes. You have to be lied to first, and then you start operating in that spirit, and you start lying. Because the spirit takes control. So that's why it says, hatred therefore is evil, for it constantly made it with lying. And what does it do, Kasa? Speaking against the truth. Right. So when hatred enters in, it has to speak against the truth. Because hatred is according to the law of the devil and not according to the law of Allah. So it has to tear down Yache. When that hatred enters into your heart, you are against Yache. Go ahead, Brother Kasim. And it maketh small things to be great. Right. So small issues become very big issues because they're not looking for a solution. When that hatred enters into their heart, they're not looking for a solution. They're looking for problems. Go ahead. The problem is to get what they want, isn't it? Because the it's self will. Yeah. All right. And causeth the light to be darkness. So everything gets flipped upside down. And calleth the sweet bitter. Right. And teacheth slander. And kindleth wrath. Right. It's the passion. And stirreth more up. emotions. Yeah. <laughs> right. And stirreth up war and violence and all covetousness. And all self will. It it comes in with the perspective, Zachwa, that we've seen multiple spirits that store up wrath, envy, causes anger and war in the mind. Hatred does what it's doing. Anger is doing what it's doing. Vexation, lying. It makes sense why you mentioned how it anger gets things confusing. Dan right. said he has said, depart from wrath and hate lying. And he goes on right. to say so that you will not fall into any wrath oh, or confusion. Gonna... Ah, sorry. <laughs> I'm like, wow. We're going to get that. It's a law. Like, by the end of this, everybody's going to understand that when you fall into these spirits, you are falling into another law. You're falling into the law of the enemy. Like you're a slave. That's why I said you're a slave unto two contrary passions. Because you're literally adhering. When you give into these spirits, you're adhering to the law of the enemy. And you start bringing forth the works of the flesh because 
that's the spirit that you're operating in. When you operate in the good spirit of Elohim, you start bringing forth. And when you adhere to his law, you start bringing forth the fruits of the spirit. That's why the anger, hatred, envy, these spirits right here are nothing to play with. And this is why we're here talking about it so that we can get people on the right track who struggle with these spirits on the right track to serving Elohim. Because you can't serve Elohim with these spirits. Verse 2, it filleth the heart with evils and devilish poison. It filleth the heart. So it's already past the mind at this point. And it's entering into the heart. Go ahead. These things, therefore, I say to you from experience, my children, that ye may drive forth hatred, which is of the devil, and cleave to the love of Allah. Mm. Righteousness casteth out hatred. Righteousness See, but... casteth out hatred. So the law casteth out hatred. Cleaving unto the law casteth out hatred. Go ahead, Brother Cotton. It really is in perspective now what that means. <laughs> it's, you're cleaving unto the right law. Humility destroyeth envy. Humility destroyeth envy. And let's understand why. Why does humility destroy envy? For he that is just and humble is ashamed to do what is unjust. Hmm. Being reproved not of another, but of his own heart. Because the Lord looketh on his inclination. Mm. So his inclination is in darkened. Because he's looking for righteousness. He's striving in humility. So because those are the things that he has his eye on. Those are the things that are going to bring forth the correction, not from anyone else, but from his own heart. And what does he have to practice, Kasim? He speaketh not against a holy man, because the fear of Allah overcometh hatred. The fear of Allah overcometh hatred. So he had to practice the fear of Elohim, which is keeping the commandments. For fearing lest he should offend the Lord, he will not do wrong to any man, even in thought. Mm -hmm. These things I learned at last, after I had repented concerning Joseph. So for us, turning away from these spirits is a great work. And it takes a true repentance to turn away from them. Because we have to first understand them. And secondly, it can't be a desire of us. What does it say next, Brother Kassafo? For true repentance after a holy sort destroyeth ignorance and driveth away the darkness. So with us coming to a true repentance and not having pleasure in these spirits anymore and then understanding how the spirits are operating through the grace of Allah it destroys ignorance. So because we got to learn how they work and what's working against us, it destroys that ignorance. 
then driveth away the darkness. The light then comes, the light of the law comes in, it shines upon the darkness. Go ahead, Brother Kassim. And enlighteneth the eyes, and giveth knowledge to the soul, and leadeth the mind to salvation. Hmm. And those things which he hath not learnt from man, it knoweth through repentance. All right. So the things that you may still need to understand, through your repentance, you're actually going to learn them. Because Allah Hayim is going to start helping you. Now we have to stay away from arrogance. Arrogance is an attitude of superiority manifested in an overbearing manner or in presumptuous claims or assumptions. Having or revealing an exaggerated sense of one's own importance or abilities. A.K.A. pride. Because that's the first thing that enters in that causes us to go away from the law of Elohim. So that's very important because if we don't know what first comes in to cause us to go away, how can we stand against it? So we have to be very mindful of arrogance or pride in the first place, which is why we're going to be going into the pride lesson next, a higher willing to keep us away from pride so that we can stand aloof from anger and other spirits that are going to lead us astray. Remember fornication and the love of money teaches arrogance. So it's the idolatry and the lust. So that means that we have pleasure in it. So it gives place for the idol to operate or to lie to us. And then whenever we have that vexation of spirit, then wrath and lying enters in. So we see the spirit of hatred leads us to love arrogance, that fornication, and the love of money teaches. Casa, can we go to Testament of Dan chapter 3, verse 1, please? Sure. Chapter 3, verse 1. For anger is an evil thing, my children, for it troubleth even the soul itself, and the body of the angry man it maketh its own and over his soul it getteth the mastery and it bestoweth upon the body power that it may work all iniquity well anger takes over keep going brother Costa. and when the body does all these things the soul justifieth what is done since it seeth not aright. Right. So in that anger, everything is justified because everything is upside down. So the bad it sees as good and the good it sees as bad. So the things a person may do in anger, they become justified in their anger. So we understand the justification now. Go ahead, Brother Kassim. Therefore, he that is wrathful, if he be a mighty man, hath a threefold power in his anger. One by the help of his servants, and the second by his wealth, whereby he persuadeth and overcometh wrongfully. And thirdly, having his own natural power, he worketh thereby the evil. All right. So if a man is dealing with anger, anything that he can use in his anger, he will use it. Go ahead, Kassim. And though the wrathful man be weak, yet hath he a power twofold of that which is by nature. For wrath ever aideth such in lawlessness. Mm -hmm. right. So wrath works the cost of self-will to be lawless and to do one's desire or has pleasure in it instead of the law of the Lord and the fruits of the spirit because arrogance which is caused by fornication and the love of money 
it's the spirit at work and self-will to do one's own pleasure for one's own self. Go ahead and finish, Cuss. This spirit goeth always with lying at the right hand of Satan, that with cruelty and lying his works may be wrought. So we see who we're working for when we fall into these spirits. We see exactly who we're working for. Can we get the definition of self-will, please? G829. Self-pleasing. That is arrogant. Self-willed. So we get to see that through that pride and that arrogance, it is self-will. So we get to actually see where the self-will comes from. It comes through pride and the arrogance. So wrath goes with lying, using cruelty. And then the arrogance comes in to do the works of Satan, the self-will. Which self-will is not actually self-will, but we're gonna, we're gonna, it's called self-will, but you're not doing your own will. So it's very interesting. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Let's jump to let's jump to Simeon chapter three verse two. Simeon chapter three verse two. For envy ruleth over the whole mind of a man, and suffer him neither to eat nor to drink nor to do any good thing. But it ever suggesteth to him to destroy him that he envieth. And so long as he that is envied flourisheth, he that envieth fadeth away. Right. So he's literally falling away because he's literally, he's struggling, he's he being overtaken. So that envy... You got to really, really watch envy because it deteriorates a person. You see, it doesn't eat, it doesn't drink, you know, so that spirit in itself, it destroys the body, it destroys the mind. Can we continue to Simeon 4 and 8, please, Brother Casa? Sure. Simeon chapter 4, verse 8. For this maketh savage the soul and destroyeth the body. It causeth anger and war in the mind and stirreth up unto deeds of blood. Right. So you can see that envy causes anger. And these spirits trouble the soul to cause depression and anxiety. So you can actually see how envy works. And in this case, how it brings forth anger. And stirreth up unto deeds of blood, and leadeth the mind into frenzy, and suffereth not prudence to act in men. Moreover, it taketh away sleep, and causeth tumult to the soul, and trembling to the body. So let's keep going. For even in sleep, some malicious jealousy deluding him gnaweth, and with wicked spirits disturbeth his soul, and causeth the body to be troubled, and waketh the mind from sleep in confusion. So, when you wake up in the middle of the night, we get to understand how envy works. You wake up in confusion, you wake up troubled. Envy. Envy is at work. So that's a key indicator for us to understand, hey, all right, I need to focus on envy if these things are happening. Now, there's some key things that we have to know and that really, really affect us when it comes to being sleep deprived or, or having trouble sleeping. Um, Casa, if you don't mind, can we read Sirach 40, chapter 40, verse 5 through 8, please? Sure. Wrath and envy, trouble 
and quietness, fear of death and anger and strife, and in the time of rest upon his bed, his night sleep do change his knowledge. Now that is the interesting thing. It says wrath, envy, trouble, anything that troubles you, unquietness. So it's like calamity. Like it's it's a lot going on. Fear of death, which we know is of the enemy. Remember from Hebrews chapter two. Anger and strife. And in the time of rest upon his bed, his night sleep do change his knowledge. Now, you'll be like, okay, what does that have to do with changing knowledge? Because though you can go through the day and you can bypass and overlook these things, anything that's befalling you during the day or anything or any spirit that may be attaching itself to you or trying to, to get you to go off the path, those spirits are the ones that change your knowledge at night because you can't get away from them. That's why it says, and in the time of rest upon his bed, his night sleep do change his knowledge. And that's why a lot of times you can't go to sleep because those spirits are still present and they're more prevalent at nighttime when you're about to go to sleep and they show themselves in your dreams. So they change your knowledge. They change what you're walking in to really show you what you're walking in. And it comes at night. Keep going, Brother Casa. A little or nothing is his rest. Right. So a little or nothing is his rest because when you lay down, that's when they come. So at night when you lay down or at night when you're sleeping, that's when they come. And that's when it's unquiet because you're not able to just keep moving and putting them in the background. You actually have to deal with them and they come to the forefront when you're laying down and you're still and when you go to sleep. So that's why it's a lot of times it's hard for people to get sleep, especially if they have these spirits specifically troubling them because they come and like we said, they come with a force. All of them are coming all at the same time because they attach and work with one another. So it's a force coming to you and then you can't go to sleep or you're troubled in your sleep. Uh, keep going, Brother Casa, please. And afterward, he is in his sleep as in a day of keeping watch. So when he goes in his sleep, he's still on 10. He's still alert, like on guard, like defensive because he's not at peace. There's no peace. And the spirits are coming. You're constantly being attacked. The spirits are coming. And you're still at war. You're still at war in your mind. So then it says, as in a day of keeping watch, you know how alert you have to be to keep watch or like to keep watch over a city. Like when you get slack, usually that's when the enemy comes and it's not good for you. It doesn't turn out well for you. But if you're on guard and you're always ready and alert, then it means that you are defensive. You're on the defense because you're not on the offensive because you're not going to attack. You're on the defensive waiting in case someone does attack. So you can see the the mindset. You can see the, the, the spirit of the person is... It's a, I have to protect myself. I have to fend for myself. I have to fight for myself from what's coming at me. And when you're in that mindset, you're constantly in that mindset. So it starts from the morning and you're literally in that battle all throughout the day. So you, you come out, you go to sleep. I mean, you lay down, you, you're, you, everything is coming to you because it's quiet. Everything's coming to you. Then you go to sleep. 
you're still battling. You're still defending yourself. Then you wake up in the morning from defending yourself. And then you have to go through the day. And you're still going through the day in that defensive. I have to defend myself. I have to stand up for myself because of the spirits that are attacking you. And you go in that mindset and everything. Instead of coming out of the mindset, like, okay, let me find out what I need to do so that I can combat these spirits because it's easy throughout the day because you can go through whatever experience and keep moving through the day. And because of the day you have things to do, you can keep moving. But then when you come to rest at night, everything catches up to you and bum rushes you. So you, you had anything on that, Brother Casa? It's accurate. And now we get to see through the testament of Simeon said some malicious jealousy, even in sleep, some malicious jealousy with with wicked spirits gnaweth at the soul. And you get to see here the other spirits at work, the wrath, anger, strife. And I've experienced it where I'm in a battle all day from the struggle of the mind. So it was accurate. And it was, I was waiting to hear that solution of come to it with, okay, let me seek help on friggin' learning how to come out of this. You know, what I need to do to defend myself from these spirits. I was sitting there like, well, the logic of like, okay, I'm on guard every day, all day. I'm sorry. I'm on guard. When I lay down, I'm on guard every day. I'm like, huh? where's the answer right why am i not why am i not praying why am i not focused why am i not trusting hey i have a i have a savior yes we have to cast out wicked imaginations you know learning the law like why am i not speaking the law against these things just speaking what the commandments are and cleaving to that like not moving that's what that is good that's what that's what needful yeah, seek the judgments to be at peace. So, I'm like, okay, you gotta understand so, it. I mean, it's clicking to you, but for others, you know, we still gotta teach. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, the, I'm being vulnerable for that reason as well, so people can know it happens, and there are solutions. You know, people, this Yacha is real. He, he has solutions for us all. You know, so. All right, let's go ahead and get through this thing. Um, we're troubled. Okay. As in a day of keeping watch, troubled in the vision of his heart. So he's troubled in the vision of his heart. It's amazing because because these spirits have place, it troubles you, and because you know they have place, it troubles you. And then when it comes in the night in a dream, it troubles you more because it's like, man, it's still there. And you're in it all day. Think about it. You're literally in the in the battle all day. And then it comes to you at night. It comes to you in your dreams. Like, and then you're like, man, I can't get away from it. I can't beat it. I'm not strong enough. not understanding that that's just how those spirits operate and just not understanding your opponent. Because if you understand your opponent, then you understand what you need to do and how they are attacking you. But if you don't know how they're attacking you, then you can't withstand your opponent. As if he were escaped out of a battle. Right. Like, it's it's literally a battle all day. And then it manifests itself at night. And that's where it gets worse because you're still. You're laying down. You're not continually moving forward. You're not doing other things to take your mind off of it though you may have an encounter with it or it may or it may move you in a certain instance, couple of instances through the day or whatever the case is, 
it, it's able to fully engage you and have your attention at night when you're laying down and when you're in your dreams. Cause I'm, I'm waiting on you. There's in the Psalms of Solomon, you talked on, you kept mentioning the accidents of before you receive as good because everything comes from Allah basically. Right. These things, these attacks, seeing it the right way is to say, okay, you're showing me what spirits still have place in me. That's something to be thankful for. Like, okay, thank you. Okay, this is still all right. I need to pay attention to this because knowing from experience, the spirits, they weigh on me. They weigh me down, take me like this. They're discouraging right. when, because I wasn't seeing it right. I'm like, oh, I'm, you're just showing me, okay, I haven't overcome this yet. I still have to put the work in. Like seeing the blessing, thank you. And without being weighed down by it, because cheerfulness, that's a spirit from Allah, it withstands them. Even the long suffering to not get upset with myself about it. Like, hey, okay, this is where it's at. I got work to do. Let me put my hand to the plow and get after this. Let me, okay, I need to pray more. Let me increase because, hey, this stuff is still here. I got work to do. It's seeing it in the right way. And in the Psalms of Solomon, it, as you explained, it started to come together why he said something here. It says, this is Psalms of Solomon, chapter 6. Happy is the man whose heart is fixed to call upon the name of Ahaya. As I mentioned, why was I sitting there battling for myself instead of calling on Yache? When he remembers the name of Ahaya, he will be saved. It is verse 4. At what he sees in his bad dreams, his soul shall not be troubled. When he passeth through rivers and the tossing of the seas, he shall not be dismayed. He raiseth from his sleep and blesseth the name of Ahaya. I'm like, ah, oh, that's what he means. You see it the right way. Right. And you see trouble with one of the ones that was, that was vexing you. Yeah. Man, it puts it in perspective. Okay, it was seeing. Okay, Allah, you're showing me something. Bless right. you, because um, what was it Job talks about how he speaks in the visions and the dreams and a vision of the night, like you're showing me what I have going on. All right. Okay, you're giving me understanding of it. Bless you. Praise your name. Now I got some for focus for the day. Let me stay in cheer. Take these experiences as they come and be on God. Seek the judgments of Ahaya. Find the commandment to withstand that thought. And if and I that's get... That's the key. Yeah. All right. When that's you wake up, when, when Allah shows it unto you, you wake up in the morning knowing exactly what it is, and you go say, hey, what do I need to know to combat this today? What do I need to stay in a hold fast to knowing that I'm fighting against a warring against this specific thing that Al Haim is showing me. Like if you count everything as good, and that's why I even at the beginning of the lesson, I said I was gonna say that over and over and over. Because that scripture in Barnabas 19 and 6 is so powerful if you really understand it. And it applies to everything. It's a mentality. And with that mentality, Gives us strength. Casa, can we read Surah 40 and 7 real quick? Yes, we can. Surah 40 and 7. When all is safe, he awaketh and marveleth that the fear was nothing. Right. So you see this specific person. He awoke up from the dream. When everything was over in the dream, you know how you come to that conclusion in the dream and everything. You're like, all right, okay, it's good. Everything's cool. 
But this specific person didn't understand the dream. She didn't understand. He didn't have that mindset, that mentality, that all things coming from Allah Hayyam. Right? It says, when he is safe, he awaketh and marveleth that the fear was nothing. Like, okay, that's over. But it's not over because Allah Hayyam is showing you that you have something that you need to be focused on. He's trying to communicate with you and you're not receiving, you're not understanding the communication. Can you uh, read Surah 40 and 8 real quick, Brother Kassel, please? Such things happen unto all flesh, both man and beast. Look at Allah Hayyam. These spirits attack everybody, even animals. Remember, Yache had the, the spirits go into the, the swine. They can enter in animals and people. Okay. So you see that the spirits attack animals the same way because the spirits are the spirits. That's how they operate. So you have to understand how they operate to be able to combat it. So if you don't understand your enemy, then you're susceptible to being destroyed by them because you don't understand them. And can we finish it up, Brother Kassel, please? Sure. And that is sevenfold more upon sinners. And that is sevenfold more upon sinners. So for us, to one of the ways to combat it is to keep the law. Because if we keep the law, that starts to diminish the attacks in itself. Then having that mindset that anything that befalls us, we should count it good, knowing that nothing coming, everything coming from Allah Hayyam. Now that's going to start destroying the rest, because we have the mindset that Allah Hayyam is showing me something. It's for my good that he's giving me this dream. It's for my good that this experience happened to me or whatever the case is. So now you can put on that cheerfulness. You can put on that long suffering, those things in which we're going to need in order to combat these spirits, which we're, we're going to go into. We're going to go into it fully so that everybody can fully understand, you know, how to actually combat these spirits and what's needed to combat them. So that we have the weapons of our warfare, which are not carnal, so that we can go forward and walk forward and be successful and valiant for Allah Hayyam and also seek our salvation with fear and trembling. You got anything on that, Brother Kasa? Proverbs 3, verse 21 to 24 confirms that if we keep sound wisdom and discretion, it says in verse 24, when thou liest down, Thou shalt not be afraid, yea, thou shalt lie down, and thy sleep shall be sweet. So, stuff is true. Amen. Amen. Now, let's understand the power of wrath. If we go to the Testament of Dan, chapter 4, verse 1, we're going to go into wrath, and let's learn. Dan, chapter 4, verse 1. Understand ye, therefore, the power of wrath, that it is vain. For it first of all giveth provocation by word. Then by deeds it strengtheneth him who is angry. And with sharp losses disturbeth his mind, and so stirreth up with great wrath his soul. So well, there we see the mental health struggles again from wrath as well. So envy, wrath, and anger cause mental health struggles that we will see today. And you can see how being so close to Satan in these works that you could see someone going off on the far end and really having a lot of issues, not really understanding what is working against them. Continue, Brother Kassel. Verse 2. 
verse 3. Therefore, when anyone speaketh against you, be not ye moved to anger. And if any man praiseth you as holy men, be not uplifted. Be not moved either to delight or to disgust. Right. So we have to be temperate. This is going to help us overcome wrath and come anger is to be temperate in all things. If somebody speaks against us, don't be moved to anger. Be temperate. Don't get into an emotion. And if someone praises you as a holy man, don't get uplifted. Don't get arrogant. Don't get prideful. Stay humble. Stay temperate. And don't allow it to affect you. We have to be very, very temperate in all things so that we don't get swayed from the left hand or to the right. right. So beware of delighting and looking good to others or seeking honor from others or worrying about what people think or say because anger uses the desire for honor or concern with dishonor for men to cause us to sin by being uplifted by the praise of men or vexed by the dishonor from the reproach of men. Once uplifted or vexed, this happens next by anger. Go ahead, Brother Casa. For first it pleaseth the hearing. And so maketh the mind keen to perceive the grounds for provocation. And then being it raised, he thinketh that he is justly angry. So there goes the justification of the anger. And that's where a lot of us get led. So that's why we have to be very temperate in all things, not to be moved. To be able to be led to the left or to the right. Where we may fall. Can we go on to Testament of Dan, chapter 4, verse 5, Brother Casa, please? Verse 5. If you fall into any loss or ruin, my children, be not afflicted. Right. So don't be affected. If you fall into any loss or ruin, if any calamity happens to you, don't be moved. Don't give into an emotion. Just be temperate. We have to take things that befall us as good and see the good in all things, knowing that all things come from Allah Because if afflicted by anything that happens, anger causes covetousness through the vexation of spirit to get angry. So we have to be very, very temperate in all things. And it's interesting, I just had a scenario just before I got on this call. The door on the refrigerator, on my refrigerator, was already struggling. It, it was already broken because the children were opening the door too wide. And the hinge was already breaking. So right before I came on this call, the door had fallen off of the refrigerator. And the enemy tempted me to get vexed about it. And I sat there and I said, I'm not going to get into an emotion about it. I'm going to take it and I'm going to look and see what I can do to fix it. And then I'm going to do what I can not to give into an emotion, but just to take care of whatever it is that needed to be taken care of. And it helped me. It helped me not to get into an emotion, not to be vexed, not to be frustrated. So that I can continue moving in the spirit of Allah and the law of Allah and not to give place to another law. Just for personal, you know, testimony. You know, we have to see things as good. And even if you don't see things as good at that very moment, even though it is the trying of your faith, don't give into an emotion. Because you may not give into an emotion. And then later, you may see 
be able to recall it and say, hey, I do see the good in it now. Though you may have not seen it before. So be encouraged that it works. We have to stay out of our emotions. We have to stay out of passions so that we can actually serve Allah and not be taken away from serving him. Kasa, can we continue in Dan 4 verse 5? Yes, sir. For this very spirit maketh a man desire that which is perishable in order that he may be enraged through the affliction. So we see wrath working again. And this time we see wrath working through vexation. So we get to see the vexation of the spirit and we get to see it leading to the wrath. And what it does is it makes you carnal. Because the works of the flesh are carnal. So this very spirit maketh a man desire that which is perishable. So you just start desiring worldly carnal things in order that he may be enraged through the affliction, in order that that vexation may come upon you and that wrath may enter in through the affliction. Let's continue reading, Brother Katha. We're going to go to Testament to Dan chapter 4, verse 7. Chapter 4, verse 7. Moreover, a twofold mischief is wrath with lying, and they assist one another in order to disturb the heart. So you see now, we went from the vexation that leadeth to wrath, and now we're going from wrath to lying. And we see they're going to assist one another. So you're going to have the wrath, which is going to cause you to be enraged by those things that are perishable. And then you have the lying, where the spirit is lying to you about whatever the case is. And also you start operating in that spirit and lying as well. And it disturbs the heart. That's the goal. The goal is for those two things to come together and to disturb the heart. Go ahead, Brother Cosmo. And when the soul is continually disturbed, the Lord departeth from it, and Belier ruleth over it. So we see the goal here. We see the goal is to get Allah out. To get him out so that Belier can rule over it. And that's why the soul is continually disturbed. So when you see people that fall into vexation, they get vexed. And the next thing you know, the malice comes in and the lion comes in and the anger comes in and the envy comes in because the soul is continually disturbed. More spirits are adding to it. More spirits are coming in and it disturbs the soul. And it's doing all this to get the Lord out. That's the whole goal. Get the Lord out so that Satan can rule over the vessel and that you may be adherent to Satan's law and not the law of Allah. So hence we have envy, anger, wrath, and lying that work together to cause mental health struggles in the physical. So we get to see the physical of it. We get to see the anxiety. We get to see the depression. We get to see the mood swings. While we think all these things are just carnal things, it just happens or it's just something that somebody is going through. No, these are spiritual attacks from these specific spirits that are causing all these different ailments in the flesh and all these different ailments in the physical. And this is how we see it, not understanding what actually is transpiring. So let's learn how to guard ourselves from anger. Can we go to the Shepherd of Hermes, Mandate 5, Chapter 1, Verse 7, please? Sure. Hermes, Mandate 5. I would fain know, sir, say I, the working of angry temper, 
that I may guard myself from it. Yea, verily, saith he, if thou guard not thyself from it, thou and thy family, thou hast lost all thy hope. He's talking about angry temper. He said, if you don't guard yourself from angry temper, you've lost all hope. Why have you lost all hope if you don't guard yourself from angry temper? And and he said, guard yourself from angry temper. That means don't allow it to enter into your mind. And your thoughts and don't allow it to enter into your heart. You got to guard yourself. And if it enters into that mind, you got to cast it away like poison. Because once that enters into your heart, you lost all hope because you're under dominion of Belier. And you're no longer circumspect to the law of Elohim. Go ahead, Brother Kassim. But guard thyself from it, for I am with thee, yea, and all men shall hold aloof from it, as many as have repented with their whole heart. For I will be with them and will preserve them, for they all were justified by the most holy angel. All right. So if you're struggling with anger, and you're struggling with malice and envy and wrath. If you're struggling with those, you have to repent with your whole heart. That's the first step to coming out of them is to confess them and to repent with your whole heart and then to cleave unto the law of Elohim. But the law of Elohim stands aloof from those spirits because they're contrary to them. Go ahead, Brother Casa, please. Here now, saith he, the workings of angry temper, how evil it is and how it subverteth the servants of Elohim by its own working and how it leadeth them astray from righteousness. Mm -hmm. But it doth not lead astray them that are full in the faith, nor can it work upon them, because the power of the Lord is with them. But them that are empty and double-minded, it leadeth astray. All right. So we can't be empty. And we're empty of the righteousness. We're empty of the law. And we can't be double-minded. As we spoke about earlier, we can't be the servant to two contrary passions. We can't be double-minded. We have to choose one and stick with it with our whole heart. And we have to hold fast to righteousness and to the law that we're not empty. We have to be filled with something. We have to be filled with something. And that's why it's hard for them that are full of the faith. It's hard for them to be led astray because they're holding fast to righteousness. They're holding fast to the law. If we're not holding fast to the law, we can be led astray. Go ahead, Brother Cousin. For when it seeth such men in prosperity, it insinuates itself into the heart of the man. And for no cause whatsoever, the man or the woman is embittered on account of worldly matters. Uh, so we have the envy that insinuates itself into the heart of the man. And then we also have the wrath that causes the man or the woman to be embittered on account of worldly matters. So we see envy and wrath working together. Go ahead, Brother Cosmo. Either about meat or some triviality or about some friend or about giving or receiving or about follies of this kind. So everything is carnal. Everything is about how you feel. And that's where we have to stay away from. We have to stay away from the passions. We have to stay away from our feelings about carnal things and look unto the spirit and look unto the law of Elohim and keep our minds steadfast upon that. Because if we don't, 
we're going to fall. We're going to fall to our emotions. As Cain fell, as Sarah fell, and so many other examples, when people are given over to their emotions and led astray from the law of Elohim. Go ahead, Brother Kassim. For all these things are foolish and vain and senseless and inexpedient for the servants of Elohim. Amen. They're inexpedient for us. The only thing that's expedient for us is the law and the fruits of the Spirit. Go ahead, Brother Kassifo, please. Chapter 2, verse 3. But long suffering is great and strong and has a mighty and vigorous power and is prosperous in great enlargement, gladsome, exultant, free from care, glorifying the Lord at every season, having no bitterness in itself, remaining always gentle and tranquil. This long suffering, therefore, dwelleth with those whose faith is perfect. So the long suffering, we have to put that on as a garment. And that's going to help us. One, to keep the law of Elohim. And two, it's going to strengthen us in the fruits. You got anything, Kelsey? Amen. That's where we, earlier on, we touched on the Holy Spirit, where she dwells and she does not dwell in a body subject to sin. But now we get the answer to what kind of person we need to be so that she'll dwell there, long-suffering. And it's interesting how it says, long-suffering is free from care, glorifying the Lord at every season, having no bitterness in itself, always remaining gentle and tranquil. We can see how the world teaches us to be in our feelings about everything, be in our feelings about our own life, be in our feelings about what's going on around us. But the Holy Spirit's looking for a body where she can dwell that's free from care, regardless of what's going on. Glorifying the Lord at every season, no matter what season I'm in. And like Paul said, I know how to be abased and abound in all aspects. I know how to be content where I am with what I have. Always thankful, that positive mindset, thankful for what I have and content with it. And the people I see that's doing well, pray for them to have perfect prosperity, as we admonish in the scriptures we're going to get that too with him. Good. So just seeing we get a good dichotomy, like, hey, this is who I need to be. Gentle and tranquil at always. Like, okay, you mentioned like the fridge, like I'm not going to give in to this feeling. I'm going to sit back, keep the commandments, keep the temperance. Now knowing the edification we got now, knowing this warfare, like real deal. He said, guard yourself from anger. You had said that earlier. Right. And then it says right. it insinuates into the heart of a man. So it's subtle. It's let me right. weave my wait for you to do. Get oh, that, they, that vexation. That yeah, vexation okay. is subtle because the vex, they send the vexation first. The vexation is like, yo, send the vexation so the vexation can swindle its way in there. And then everybody else comes after. Yeah. Like it's clear and vexation, knowing it now that vexation is worry, frustration, or it was something else. Like it ain't just anger. Worry, vexation, or um uh Hold on, ain't yeah. nothing. I'm gonna slide on up one moment. <laughs> it ain't far from us. The state of being annoyed, frustrated, or worried. Annoyed. That glow. Annoyed. Letting that all them things, letting that that glow, that heat rising up, right. getting it a passion. Think about how does this make me feel? Like you know, sometimes where the first thought that comes is how I feel about it. The vexation works with self will. 
because as soon as something happens or arises that you don't want to deal with or you don't or is not necessarily what you want, then vexation has a place. Right. Because you get annoyed by it. You're like, man, I don't want to deal with this right now. Or you get frustrated, like, man, I got to deal with this and I don't want to. I want to go do something else. Or you get or you're worrisome about something that you don't want. Like it all is encompassed with self-will. Gotcha. And it plays on doubtful mind, sorrow, it plays on the lack of faith. Right. And your lack of really cleaving unto Allah I am. Because if if you're counting that everything happens by Allah I am, then how can you not want to deal with what Allah I am is setting before you? Right. If you see everything as good, like this is good for right. me. Whatever this is, this is good. Right. So if you're not seeing it as Allah I am is working in all things, and if an accident befalls me, and I'm not receiving it as good, then I'm going to go into self-will. I'm going to get vexated because my first thought is negative. Allah I am is not in all my thoughts. So knowing that nothing is done without Allah I am, if I lose that, then I give place to the devil. And I get annoyed. I get frustrated. I get wearisome. And I'm not looking at it as good. I'm looking at it as, why is this happening to me? Why me? Why do I have to deal with this? And once I go into that realm, I'm I'm drifting away. I'm drifting away from the law of Elohim, and I'm drifting away from the fruits of the Spirit. And no good is going to come forth from it. But I mean, there's a long suffering here. We wouldn't look at it like that. It's powerful. I see why it says it's mighty. Long suffering is great and strong and has a mighty and vigorous power. We're patient. We're long suffering. First, we have understanding. Remember, the Holy Spirit doesn't dwell with them that don't have understanding. Right, she isn't. She doesn't abide with thoughts that are without understanding. Right, so this gives us the thoughts of understanding. It's the long suffering, because we're like Alahayim. This is from Alahayim, and it's for my good. Now I have a thought of understanding. Now I'm not easily swayed by the enemy. I'm standing in faith knowing that it's Allah I am working and that it's for my good and for my growth to strengthen me in the faith of Allah I am. Now I have understanding in my thoughts. That mindset is going to get us to perfect faith. Yes, it is. Praise I haven't getting an understanding of where we need to be. But if we don't have that mindset, what do we fall into, Cosmic? But angry temper is in the first place foolish, fickle, and senseless. And what does it lead us unto? Then from foolishness is engendered bitterness. And from bitterness, wrath. And from wrath, anger. And from anger, spite. Then 
spite, being composed of all these evil elements, becometh a great sin and incurable. So we get to see if we don't stop one. First, our first line of defense is in thought. Then when one enters into our heart, now you see one coming after the other. And next thing you know, you have all these different things going on at one time. And you're like, I don't know what's going on. But they're all working with one another. They're all letting one another in. Next thing you know, you're composed of all these evil elements. And you can't get out of it. And that's why you end up sinning. And it's incurable if you don't come out of it. If you don't repent. If you don't understand it. We have to understand what's working against us. So that we're actually able to combat it. You just put in. You, anything on that, huh? you just put in perspective. I, I didn't understand why it was incurable before. Until today. Oh, I'm. I'm going to present it to you and help me understand if this is accurate. Wrath, anger and wrath leads into war and confusion. Hatred, fornication, anger, wrath, envy, all these things blind the soul, blind the inclination, blind the eye. Hence, the mm -hmm. thing is incurable because we're in darkness. We can't see for anybody or anyone. We can't see for the light to come in and cure what's going on. Yacha is knocking at the door, but he can't come in. The house is full. It's full of, of bad spirits. It's full. And also remember it says, you're not going to incline to the words of holiness. You're not going to listen to a prophet. You're not going to listen to a righteous man. Right. So you're full of those and you're blinded. So it makes it incurable until you actually hate it and repent for it and want to learn and get the understanding so that you are able to stand aloof from it. Like, it's a process. You, know? you have to first hate it. You have to not like it. Because a lot of people, they have pleasure in it. Though they may repent, quote unquote, they may like have a disdain for it and say, you know, I don't like when I do this, but then they continue doing it over and over and over showing that they have pleasure in it. Right. So until they actually repent with the whole heart, actually, that's what the scripture said. It said they have to repent with the whole heart. Right. And once you repent with your whole heart and you get the understanding of what's working against you, then you can start fighting it and combating it to come out of it. Right. That's, uh, that's true. And that wholeheartedness, because you know, well, I know what happens from experience and learning, like the doubtful mind will play on me where because I still have pleasure in the thing, I know I'm doing wrong. I will get discouraged instead of coming with that zeal of that true repentance like hey okay this isn't right i got work to do instead of giving into it like i'm never gonna get over this to where i get you know the spirit they, they work to keep me in that rut to where i can move forward and come out of the transgression instead of growing help me if i'm wrong instead of having courage of heart to put the work into change they work to get down about it like ah i see i haven't overcome this thing yet i'm still like taking it the wrong way instead of taking it for good i guess it goes right back to seeing all things as good like the accident that befell me where i fell into this thing it was for the purpose of showing me like hey this is that same spirit at work you need to see this too it doesn't just work in that one way. Take courage and be thankful. Be glorifying the Hayat every season. 
like, hey, thank you for showing me that too. I didn't realize it was getting me right here as well. And yes, all right, I, I get another angle of understanding instead of being discouraged about it. Like, all right, now I see how it got me there so I can be attentive to that too and overcome. There was one part that we went into um, earlier when we talked about, um, I think it was in Wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon chapter one, verse two. He will be found of them that tempt him not and showeth himself unto such that do not distrust him. If you trust Allah, you're not going to have doubtful mind. Because if you trust what he's teaching you and what he's showing you and his law is proven, and the fruits of the spirit are proven, you're not going to be doubtful minded because it's proven. You're going to trust him. You're going to trust his word. You're going to trust what he's saying. You're going to trust what he's telling you to do. You're going to trust the understanding that he's giving you. You're going to trust what he's telling you to do to combat it. If you trust him, then you're not going to be doubtful. It's the distrust that causes you to be doubtful minded. So you really have to put on trust and cleave unto Allah and this law that you will be able to overcome all things because seeing right here, the big thing when it comes to these spirits with anger, malice, envy, hatred, wrath all these spirits work with the law of the devil and if you cleave onto the law of Allah and you trust in his law and you put on long suffering then you're combating the devil so it's very simple gotcha it just has to be in your mind and in your heart just like right, just like the evil spirits attack our mind, like we have to be on guard and put forth the righteousness and the law in our mind. So they may come, but we have to combat it. We have to be intentional to combat whatever is coming with the law so that we can stand in faith not allowing it to enter into our hearts. That makes sense. It does. You have to stand up. <laughs> stand up in faith and fight. Right. A new area that you didn't realize was happening, or I may have just learned of a fault, and then now that I'm aware of the fault and I'm attentive to it, I start to see it manifesting in other areas. That doesn't mean get down about it because the fault was revealed so I can start fighting against it. I mean, you're growing. Right. Because it takes I mean, a light to do the thing. I was hoping to get the perspective on that because you know as some people I know from experience when as I've been learning like it can be discouraging but it's because I didn't have the right perspective not understanding this growth to be able to see the faults and then work at them. So. Just like in Ephesians 4 and 26, right? It says, be ye angry and sin not, right? It's a growth to get to the place where you get angry and you don't go and operate in anger. That's a growth. But is there a growth surpassing that one? The growth surpassing that one is being filled with long suffering so that you're not getting angry in the first place. <laughs> right. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Or getting vexated or allowing vexation to have a, a place through that long suffering. So there are growths where you can 
continue to grow in something and get stronger in it. So don't be discouraged because where you are in your walk and in your journey right now, just focus on where you are and continue to focus on your plowing that you may grow in those areas and continue to learn and to understand what's playing against you and how to overcome it through the spirit. That's what's going to help us. Amen. Praise Ahaya. Thank you. Praise Ahaya. All right. Where are we at? We're in chapter 2, verse 5, okay. where it says, For when all these spirits dwell in one vessel, where the Holy Spirit also dwelleth, that vessel cannot contain them, but overfloweth. The delicate spirit, therefore, as not being accustomed to dwell with an evil spirit, nor with harshness, departeth from a man of that kind, and seeketh to dwell with gentleness and tranquility. All right, so we see when those spirits come in, the Holy Spirit departeth, as we talked about before. Then, when it hath removed from that man, in whom it dwells, that man becometh emptied of the righteous spirit, and henceforward, being filled with the evil spirits, he is unstable in all his actions. So you see, when those spirits come in, then the Holy Spirit departeth. Now that person is blinded. That's when the blinding comes. And when he is filled with all those evil spirits, he's unstable in all his actions because everything gets flipped upside down. The bitter becomes sweet. So every action that he operates in those spirits, they all are unstable. Go ahead, Brother Cuthbert. Being dragged about hither and thither by the evil spirits. Tossed to and fro. And is altogether blinded and bereft of his good intent. Right. So although that person is still operating, although he's operating or she's operating in those spirits, that person still has their own thoughts of what they're trying to do. But because those spirits are operating, everything becomes evil. Though they may have a good intention, it comes out evil. They can never get what they're really trying to say or really trying to do out because those spirits are in all of their works. They're unstable in all their actions. So though they may have that intent or that heart intent, which is different than what they're actually portraying or saying to you, it's skewed because it's the evil spirits that are working and moving them, although that may not be where their heart is in entirety. Go ahead, Brother Cuff. Thus then it happened to all persons of angry temper. Right. So you can see how much influence the angry temper has in a man. If that angry temper has place in them, that it makes it hard for that man or that woman to do any good. Though they may desire to do good, it makes it hard for them to do it. Now let's learn what we're supposed to do so that we can combat that evil spirit of anger, angry temper. Refrain therefore from angry temper, the most evil of evil spirits. But clothe thyself in long suffering and resist angry temper 
and bitterness, and thou shalt be round in company with the holiness which is beloved of the Lord. See then that thou never neglect this commandment, for if thou master this commandment, thou shalt be able likewise to keep the remaining commandments which I am about to give thee. Be strong in them and endowed with power, and let all be endowed with power, as many as desire to walk in them. So keep that long suffering, keep that patience. Because in long suffering, in being slow to wrath, slow to anger, it's going to actually give us the company. We're going to be surrounded by the company with the holiness, which is beloved of the Lord. I mean, that the angels are going to start helping us because they see our works. They see our heart pushing forward in the right direction. And Allah is going to help us. Just like he said to Cain. Allah told Cain, he said, if thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. So if we do well, we're going to be accepted. So we see that if we put on that long suffering, it said that we shall be round in company with the holiness which is beloved of the Lord. So that means that Allah is going to send angels to help us if we see that we're striving and putting forth the effort to overcome this anger, angry temper. And we're going to be helped in it. Casa, if you don't mind, can you read Gad the Seer chapter 8, verse 7? Sure. Gad the Seer chapter 8, verse 7. And he gave each one free choice. If one wants to do good, he will be helped. And if one wants to do evil, a path will be opened for him. So if Allah sees that we want to do good and that is truly in our heart, he's going to send us help. Just like he said, we're going to be round in company. We're going to be round in company with the holiness, which is beloved of the Lord. So he's going to send us help if that's what we desire and that's what we're striving for. But if we want to do evil, he's going to make a path open for us to do it. He's going to leave us unto ourselves. So it's up to us of what we're going to choose to do and what we're going to strive for that's going to choose whether we're going to do the law of Elohim or we're going to do the law of Belia. All right, Casa, can we go ahead? Let's get the remedies for anger and wrath. And we're going to get the envy, but anger and wrath. Okay. Shepherd of Hermes, Mandate 5, Chapter 1, Verse 1, please. Chapter 1, verse 1. Be thou long-suffering and understanding, he saith, and thou shalt have the mastery over all evil deeds and shalt work all righteousness. So you see what we've been talking about throughout this whole lesson. Now we're talking about long-suffering and that same understanding that we've been explaining. And this is why this lesson is so pertinent. This lesson is so important to gain the understanding so that we can grow and we can and we can prosper knowing what is against us and what we need to do in order to overcome it. So we got to be that long suffering and understanding. Go ahead, Brother Costa. And thou shalt have the mastery over all evil deeds and shall work all righteousness. For if thou art long-suffering, the Holy Spirit that abideth in thee shall be pure, not being darkened by another evil spirit, but dwelling in a large room, shall rejoice and be glad 
with the vessel in which she dwelleth, and shall serve Allah Hayyam with much cheerfulness, having prosperity in herself. But if any angry temper approach, forthwith the Holy Spirit being delicate is straightened, not having the place clear, and seeketh to retire from the place, for she is being choked by the evil spirit, and has no room to minister unto the Lord as she desireth, being polluted by angry temper. For the Lord dwelleth in long suffering, but the devil in angry temper. Mm -hmm. Thus that both the spirits should be dwelling together is inconvenient and evil for that man in whom they dwell. All right. So you can't have long suffering and angry temper in the same vessel. You have to choose one or the other. And that's our choice. We have to make that choice. Whether we're going to be long suffering or we're going to be hasty and angry and angry temper. That gives perspective for whole heart. You gotta be one or the other. Right. Praise Allah for the perspective to see it for what it is. For if you take a little wormwood and pour it into a jar of honey, is not the whole of the honey spoiled? and all that honey ruined by a very small quantity of wormwood? For it destroyed the sweetness of the honey, and it no longer hath the same attraction to the owner because it is rendered bitter and hath lost its use. But if the wormwood be not put into the honey, the honey is found sweet and becomes useful to its owner. Thou seest then that long suffering is very sweet beyond the sweetness of honey and is useful to the Lord and he dwelleth in it. But angry temper is bitter and useless. If then angry temper be mixed with long suffering, long suffering is polluted and the man's intercession is no longer useful to Allah Hayyam. The wormwood, the wormwood is the angry temper. If a little bit of angry temper is in there, it destroys the long suffering. Because the long suffering is sweet. It's the honey. But if you put a little bit of angry temper in the long suffering, it becomes useless. It's bitter. But if the that, long suffering is by itself, it's useful to its owner. Alahayim is putting things in perspective of what it means to be wholehearted. What she's saying, like, remember, the Holy Spirit dwells where understanding is. Now, I feel like now right. I have real understanding of what long suffering really is. It's not I'm upset, but I'm going to just be patient. It's real long suffering wholehearted is i'm not going to be upset i'm not going to give into the emotion and i'm going to be patient All right i'm not going to get offended at what was done right. i'm going to be understanding and long suffering right and that puts in perspective i'm going to keep my honey pure right see Crazy. because if i'm upset and i'm long suffering in my vexation, then it's rendered useless. Right. I have to be pure completely, not to give into the vexation, not to give into the angry temper, but to be long suffering completely and not to be given into any emotion looking that all things are good for my good and for my benefit from Allah and staying in my long suffering 
and counting it all joy. In perspective of how to perfect our faith. <laughs> Praise the high Allah. Thou seest then that long suffering is very sweet, beyond the sweetness of honey, and is useful to the Lord, and he dwelleth in it. But angry temper is bitter and useless. If then angry temper be mixed with long suffering, long suffering is polluted and the man's intercession is no longer useful to Allah Hayyam. Mm. So we get to see that Allah Hayyam dwells in long suffering. And that's why our long suffering and angry temper can't be mixed because we become the servant of two passions. We become lukewarm. We're operating in angry temper, giving place to the devil, being vexated. And we're also operating in long suffering, giving place to Allah Hayyam, serving two masters. You want to continue, Brother Kasa? Sure. Chapter 2, verse 3. But long suffering is great and strong and has a mighty and vigorous power and is prosperous in great enlargement, gladsome, exultant, free from care, glorifying the Lord at every season, having no bitterness in itself, always remaining gentle and tranquil. This long suffering, therefore, dwelleth with those whose faith is perfect. Right, because they can't be moved. They can't be moved by anything that goeth on in the world, anything that's carnal. They're standing in faith. They know that Allah Hayyam, everything coming from Allah Hayyam, no matter what's going on, this is for my good. Allah Hayyam is strengthening me and prospering me. He's taking me through a trial so that I can learn something, I can grow in an area. I'm not going to get upset or vexated when it comes upon me because I don't have my own desires. I don't have my own self-will. I'm bowing myself unto Allah Hayyam and his will for me in my life. And I know that everything he sends toward me is for my good. I just have to have that mindset to see it and that perspective to see that it's for my good and operating in my long suffering and not being vexated but walking in my long suffering purely and enduring all things. That's the faith. Amen. If you remember when we talked about Daniel chapter 4 verse 5, about if you suffer any loss or ruin, be not afflicted. We're going to touch further into that because it says, for this very spirit maketh a man desire that which is perishable. And there's a reason for that, and we need to understand why it makes a man desire that which is perishable so that we can actually figure out where we are in our walk. And this is one of those realization moments that it's essential because in this walk you have to understand where you are in it because I can't grow fruit when I'm a new sprouting plant or new sprouting tree but I feel like I'm fully grown so if I feel like I'm fully grown, I feel like I should be producing fruit on my limbs. But that may not be the reality. The reality may be I need water. So if it, I have to understand where I am so that I can grow from where I am. 
Casa, can we read Shepherd Hermes Mandate 10? We're going to start at verse 1 and 1, then we're going to jump over to 1 and 4, please. Okay. Hermes Mandate 10, chapter 1, verse 1. Put away sorrow from thyself, saith he, for she is the sister of doubtful mindedness and of angry temper. All right. So put away sorrow from yourself. Because that sorrow stops us from wanting to see where we are. Because that's where the envy comes in at. Because you're envious of where other people are. And you know where you are. Though you may not want to accept it. And that acceptance is so essential to this walk. Because that acceptance is truth. If you can't hold fast to the truth of yourself, you can't hold fast to no truth at all. And for us, we have to put that sorrow away from us because that's where after the envy comes, the sorrow causes us to say, oh, oh I can't get it right. Or, and that's where the doubtful mindedness comes in. Oh, I can't get it right. Or, uh, it's it's always something, or and then the vexation comes in. It's 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 just one after another. Then the angry temper comes in because you're vexated because you can't get it right, or because where you are and not accepting it. Then the vexation comes in. Then the anger comes in. Like it's one after another. Boom, 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 bap. So if you don't catch it, you just fall off of the deep end. And for us, we have to learn what's needed and learn how to catch it and what to look for. Uh, Kasi, you got something? And once we get into that spiritual fornication, remember fornication teaches arrogance. So then the desire to be above others plays as well. The pride, it all plays in. Yeah. It comes. It definitely comes. And we're going to get some more understanding of it. Can we jump over to uh, verse 1 and 4, please? Yes, sir. Listen, saith he, those who have never investigated concerning the truth, nor inquired concerning the deity, but have merely believed. Let's understand that first before we go into where it's going to take you. Right? It says, those who have never investigated concerning the truth, what does that mean? You never tried it out. Now, this is for people that are relatively new to the faith or have came from another faith. This is more predominant for them, but it also can fall for some that have been in the faith but have have only cleaned the outside of the cup and haven't cleaned the inside of the cup and for those it's when this applies so that they can understand what exactly this is talking about those who have never investigated concerning the truth so you never actually did everything or did the things that the scriptures were telling you to do in any scenario or whatever the case is to actually see if it's actually true and it works so that's where you have that lack. If we're going to go into it, it's going to start talking about um, believing. And that's where we, it kind of trips you up because you have no experience. Then the next part, it says, nor inquire concerning the deity. So you never ask the right questions for Elohim to show you this or Elohim to show you that to increase your faith or whatever the case is you haven't inquired concerning the deity you haven't actually made your supplication known to help you in your walk and this is why it's very important to accept where you are in your walk because how can you inquire of things that you don't feel like you're struggling with? Or how can you inquire of things 
when you feel like you're at one place when you may be at another, how can you inquire of things if you're not seeing truth or speaking truth to yourself? It gets a little blurry. So you can see how once we start really going further into it, how it's going to lead you in that direction. So they never investigated concerning the truth, nor inquired concerning the deity, but have merely believed. So all they did was say, I believe. But my faith has no concrete structure. There's nothing supporting my faith. I'm not saying I believe because of the things that I have encountered based off of doing what it told me to do. You're not building that foundation. You're not building that trust. So therefore, what does it go on to say, Brother Kassafu? And I've been mixed up in business affairs and riches and heathen friendships and many other affairs of this world. Right. So you see how you get entangled in those? Because you never really gave yourself over to Elohim in the first place. And that's why those things can come in and actually have place. And that's why when you read in Daniel, I mean, um, when you read in Dan 4 and 5, it says, if you suffer loss or ruin, my children, be not afflicted for this very spirit maketh a man desire that which is perishable. So you may just very well believe, just like merely believe, as it says in Mandate 10, a shepherd of Hermes. But then when you suffer some loss or ruin, you fall away. Because you don't have a foundation. You don't have experiences. You don't have you don't have that trust in Alahayim to catch you. You go to what you know. You go to what you're comfortable with. And that's where it, it gets a little dicey. Because what you're comfortable with is not according to Alahayim. It's according to the world. And then that's when you fall. That's why he says, if you suffer loss of ruin, be not afflicted. Like, yo, the things that befall us count as good knowing that Alahayim. Everything is of Alahayim. Like, you have to have that mindset. Because if you don't, you're falling away again. Uh, can you continue, Brother Casa? As many, I say, as devote themselves to these things, comprehend not the parables of the deity. Right. So you now, since we have that understanding, now we can understand what is actually referring to right here. As many, I say, as devote themselves to these things. So when you devote yourself, you're in the business affairs and the friendships and the whatever the case is, and you devoted yourself to those because you're still living double-minded. You're devoting yourself to one and the other. You're, when things are good over here, you're over here. When things are bad, you go over here. So you can see the 50-50. They comprehend not the parables of the deity. Now we understand what that means, seeing that you didn't investigate concerning the truth nor inquire concerning the deity. So you never comprehended the parables to understand to apply them. You didn't gain that experience. You have to try it. You have to test it to see if it's true. And that increases our faith. You got something? You touched on the understanding of what happens in sleep. Remember, Alahayim speaks in dreams and visions of the night in dark sentences. So he's still 
telling us the things we need to do in our sleep. He's still showing us what we're doing wrong. But if I'm waking up from my sleep as if it was just a dream and nothing actually happened and not actually inquiring concerning the deity, what does Allah want me to understand from this? If I'm not investigating concerning the truth, what's the truth of this matter? How can I overcome this thing? I'm going to continue in the world. I'm not going to see like Allah has been talking to me, but he's talking to parables. I don't inquire of him. Right. I'm in darkness. And then the, the birth. Wow. He says, for they are darkened by these actions. Right. My focus on worldly matters darkens me for being able to focus on what Allah is trying to show me. Right. Mm. The mindset of the worldly matters in the way of the world is blinding you to it. Mm. because we we have learned from the world that everything exterior of us is the problem instead of looking inward and Allah weighs the inward man he weighs the spirit so he's looking inward we're looking outward he's trying to talk to us about hey this is what's going on with you so that you can actually examine what's going on in your heart. And we're like, no, nah, that I, this happened to me. That happened to me. This happened to me. So this is why I did this. And we go into every excuse and every justification not to look at ourselves. The spirit of anger justifies what is done. Right. And after you're darkened by all these actions, what happens, Casa? And are corrupted and become barren. Right. So because you're corrupted, because your seed is sown with goodness and iniquity, you become barren. Because Allah Hayyam can't use you. And I know it sounds very, very rough, but it's the truth of the matter is, is it's hard to become a vessel of honor when you have spirits that have place in you whenever something doesn't go your way to then fall and give in to the spirits of the world. And it makes it hard to, to be able to be used by Allah Hayyam. That makes sense for the concept. Yes, because he's there for those that do not distrust him. He's looking for faithful servants. We have examples and testimonies of faithful people who, even when they were tried, they stayed with Allah Hayyam. But we're seeing how these spirits at work, whenever a trial comes, we forsake Allah Hayyam. And it's hard to be of use. But it's good to get to know this now so we know what we need to do, what we need to practice so that we can be a vessel on to honor. We can be someone he trusts, you know, show him that we're faithful. So. Amen. Now, the parable is going to go on and it's going to, the parable always rectifies or clarifies the understanding. Uh, go ahead, Brother Cass. Verse 5. As good vineyards, when they are treated with neglect, are made barren by the thorns and weeds of various kinds, so men who, after they have believed, fall into many occupations, which were mentioned before, lose their understanding and comprehend nothing at all concerning righteousness. Right. So even when Allah has called you, Right? Because he already chose you. He called you. He's calling you unto the calling. He's like, okay, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go and keep my commandments. I want you to, to walk this way. I want you to do these things so that you can bring forth fruit and that we can, we can gain a relationship where I can trust you. As good vineyards, when they are treated with neglect, now the neglect is we're not 
protecting our own vessel. Because we're looking at everything externally. And this is for this specific, what we're talking about here, these, this specific group of people. Because we're looking at everything externally, we're not protecting ourselves. Everything else is the problem, but we're not the problem. Though we may see that we're the problem, we really don't truly acknowledge it because we're still justifying or making excuses for what we're doing or what we're giving ourselves into based off of that sorrow. So you can see why he's being so specific about sorrow here, because that sorrow causes us to go away from Alahayim. So as a good vineyard, when they're treated with neglect, are made barren by the thorns and weeds of various kinds. So because you're not protecting yourself, it allows the spirits to come in and operate and to have a place in you. So then they can jump in whenever there's an opportunity. So men who after they have believed fall into these many occupations which were mentioned before lose their understanding. So though you may understood something it's very specific in this wording. It's that you lose your understanding. Though you may have understood the scripture and you understood the meaning of it and what it actually said to do, because you never actually applied it and gained that experience, it allowed you to lose your understanding when that vexation came or when that sorrow and, and doubtful mind and anger came. When that loss or that ruin, not having that mindset, when that came and the vexation came, you lose your understanding. All those things go out the door and you're lost in whatever spirit it is that came upon you because you don't have that experience. You're not putting it to the test. And comprehend nothing at all concerning righteousness. Very specific. You comprehend nothing at all concerning righteousness because you're given over to the spirits already. Righteousness is out the door because you never went and, ex and truly experienced it. You never inquired concerning the deity and you never investigated concerning the truth. You don't have the experiences to rely on, to have a testimony that, hey, this is true and it works. And this is what I'm going to do because I know it works. Now, what happens? What happens if they're gone? Let's say that they've given over to the vexation, the anger, the sorrow. Let's say that they've already given over to that. What happens at that point? Go ahead, Brother Kassel. Well, If they hear concerning the deity and truth, their mind is absorbed in their occupations and they perceive nothing at all. Right. So they can't even hear you. Whatever it is, where their mind is, whether it be a justification, whether it be an excuse, whether it be um, something of the world, whether it be whatever their fallback is that they fall back into, they don't perceive anything when it comes to Allah and his righteousness or the truth. Because we already know they're blinded, as we learned in the lesson. So you can start seeing how a lot of these things are starting to, to intermingle. And you're getting more understanding of the different ways that it can actually operate. You got anything on that, Cos? It's true. It is true. If they hear this, I mean, true. It said their mind is absorbed. That means that yeah. it can't see anything else. It's forefront. Dumb. Right. Spirit of deceit. Go. The spirit of deceit, anger uses the net of deceit. It's absorbing because 
when somebody's trying to talk, this is just a example, when somebody's trying to talk to you about the deity and truth, maybe trying to help you understand what's going on with you, the spirits come and say, like, you don't understand. Like, you don't understand what I've been through. You don't know how it feels. Because envy sees through its feelings. These things absorb the mind. Remember, envy ruleth over the whole mind of a man. So these spirits, they actually overtake. Fornication causes us to walk in darkness as in the day. Like, it's a real deal. Overtaking and hearing it, understanding it, speaking from experience. It helps to get to that place of humility and get out of feelings and the spirit of offense, being defensive, even those dreams that cause us to be on the defense all day. We don't see it, but now hopefully we see these things also cause us to be defensive against people, thinking right. everyone's coming at us. Right. And we know now that's the spirit of anger, fornication, and hatred. Because these spirits, they will not hearken to a prophet. They don't have love for a righteous man. They resent the words of holiness. Like, see these spirits for what they are so that when, when you hear concerning the deity and truth, take the time and in humility, get out of feelings. Like, hey, let me assess this. Let me stop. Let me take the moment. You had touched on earlier in the lesson about Cain, how he had that moment of choice that opportunity to choose right then and there mm -hmm. but and i'd relate at that time how hastiness of spirit works with the devil eagerness through covetousness vain words to beguile the soul like we have to stop okay hold on even how we lose our understanding and comprehend nothing concerning righteousness because we're gone in our feelings and in these spirits let's take the time to investigate concerning the truth. Slow down. Let's see what it says. But now you're going into it. Let's see if it's going to confirm you. Let's keep reading and see if we can, we can get it all together. Okay. But they that have the fear of Allah and investigate concerning deity and truth and direct their heart towards the Lord, perceive and understand everything that is said to them more quickly because they have the fear of the Lord in themselves. For where the Lord dwelleth, there too is great understanding. Cleave therefore unto the Lord, and thou shalt understand and perceive all things. When Dan said, if you suffer any loss of ruin, be not afflicted. You can understand why. Because you're supposed to, in those times, you're supposed to cleave unto Allah more. Not depart from him. Because that's when you actually really need him. It says, but they either have the fear of Allah and investigate concerning the deity. So when you have that moment, a vexation and you're like okay i understand what this vexation is let me go and investigate concerning the deity what i should do right now so that i could try it and improve it it says and direct their heart towards allah or towards a higher you direct your heart towards him instead of going and directing your heart toward the things of the world. You're like, okay, let me focus. Let me give in to Allah right now. Let me direct my heart toward him, knowing what I'm going through. Perceive and understand everything that is said to them more quickly. So now you're more susceptible. You can hear better. You're not darkened. Now you can actually go according to a sound mind and say, okay, let me take this on and let me take it on the right way. Let me not just quit and go into sorrow and give into whatever spirit I want to give into that has place in me or whatever desire it is. Instead, let me combat it. 
let me cleave unto Allah instead of just giving in to my pleasure or whatever it is that I'm struggling with. Now I'm susceptible to hearing righteousness because I'm not allowing the vexation to take me away. For where the Lord dwelleth, there too is great understanding. You just got to find it. You have to be seeking him at this time. Cleave therefore unto the Lord, and thou shalt understand and perceive all things. So that's them that believe. They have the fear of Allah. And this is where we want everyone to be, is to have that fear of Allah. So that we can actually go forward. And be cleaving and be with Allah always, not only when things are pleasurable and good, but also knowing when the accidents will fall us, that that's from Allah too, for our growth and for us to see who we are. Whether it be sleep, whether it be attacks, whether it be um, things that are going on with you and other people throughout your day, whatever the case is. We have to see that everything is good and for our growth and it coming from Allah. Like we have to. Um, just to confirm that everything coming from Allah, I want to look at Job just so we can understand. Uh, Job chapter 1, verse 6 through 12, please. Job chapter 1, verse 6 to 12. Mm -hmm. Now, there was a day when the sons of Allah came to present themselves before Ahaya, and Satan came also among them. And Ahaya said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered Ahaya and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. So exactly. Satan had to give a report. When Allah required it of him, he had to give a report of what he was doing. All right, go ahead, Brother Kasim. And I have said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and, and upright man, one that fareth Allah am, and escheweth evil? Then Satan answered Ahayah and said, Doth Job fear Allah am for naught? Hast thou not made an hedge about him, and about his house, and about all that he hath on every side, thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. Put forth thine hand now, and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. And I have said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. Who gave Satan the command? Who gave him the, the objective? Even the authority. Right. So we get to see how everything comes from Allah. Even the accidents that befall us, it comes from Allah. Whether it be to try our faith, whether it be to show us our iniquity, whether it be to help us, Because Allah, he chasteneth those in whom he loves. So if he's not teaching you as a father and chastising you and giving you understanding of the things that you may be struggling with or battling with, how is he being a good father? Even if he, he operates in patience and long suffering. So even when we're not listening, he still is there trying to help us. Even when we don't want to perceive it as good. He still sends it because we need it. Can we also touch on um, Ecclesiastes um, 3 and 14 and 15 as well? Please, Brother Kassel. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 14. I know that whatsoever Allah am doeth, it shall be forever. Nothing can be put to it, nor anything taken from it. All right. And so I, whatever Allah doeth, 
It's it's for sure. All right, go ahead. And Allah I am doeth it that men should fear before him. So the things, the accents that befall you, Allah I am doeth it so that you should fear before him. That's the purpose. For you to fear before him and not and not give in to, this is exactly what we're talking about, and not give in to when you suffer loss or ruin, to be afflicted or to fall off into the world or whatever your pleasure is. That's not what it's for. It's for the fear of Allah to to come into you, where you don't want to make that mistake because of Allah or you don't want to give into your own pleasure, or give into the world because of Allah. Can you continue reading, Brother Kasa, please? If can I make a comment on what you said? Yeah, definitely. Self will on the worldly view causes us to view Allah as someone who's supposed to give us what we want. And when we don't get it, it's easy to go back. To the sorrow, the anger, the disappointment. But our whole duty is actually to fear Allah and keep his commandments, as Solomon well said in this chapter. With that perspective, to know that's what our duty is as men, that's what he requires of us to walk humbly, justly, to fear him and keep his commandments. It helps take these experiences as good to see that, hey, you're doing things, you're giving me something to help me see where I need to fear you. Or I need to get it right so I can walk in your commandments. You're doing this for me as opposed to I'm not getting what I want, so I'm upset. If from dichotomy of perspective. Mm -hmm. And chapter three, okay, verse 15. that was good. Let's keep going. Yeah. <laughs> Praise Ahaya. That which hath been is now, and that which is to be hath already been. And Allah requireth that which is past. Right. So everything that happens from the past unto the present and unto the future is all because of Allah. That which has been is now. So that's the present. Everything that's happening is because of him right now. And that which is to be hath already been. So the future, he already that said it, what it's going to be. Everything that befalls you is of Allah. And Allah requires that which is past. So everything you went through was because of him too. Because he needed you to go through it. So that you could actually learn the things that you needed to learn in order to serve him, in order to keep his commandments. The whole duty of man is to keep the commandments. So everything that we're learning is to help us keep the commandments. We have our weaknesses that cause us not to be able to keep certain commandments. And that's where a father comes in and says, hey, I see you're struggling here. Let me give you something to help you. That's the point. When we talked about in the in the lesson, the standard of Yache, when we talked about focus on your own plowing, and when you can help your brother, help your brother or your sister. Like that's how Allah I am is. He's focused on his own work, his own prophecy, everything he has going on. And when he sees us in need, he sends us help. We have to receive it as good. <laughs> that's the problem. <laughs> If we receive it as evil, then how can we truly be helped? You got anything, Casa? I thought touching on Job was perfect for this edification because we've not been really taught what Job was actually taught through his experience and understanding how these spirits work. It helped me if I'm not seeing it right, but I think we have understanding of it. He was he was perfect. Perfect means to be sincere, but he still had grown to do. Right. Uh, I am permitted what transpired to help him because 
Job had to grow in patience, which he's a testimony of. And he had to grow in humility and overcoming the spirits of sorrow and anger because everything weighed on him. At first, he was holding on like, Allah I am giveth, Allah I am taketh away. You know, it is, I'm going to praise him no matter what. But as everybody weighed on him, the devil kept on through his friends, worldly friendships, and his friends right. weighing on him. Feelings. Everything going right. His feelings. He got the devil finally got to him to get him to get in his feelings and justify himself. He gave into the anger about what was going on. And showing Allah I am showing his love. If you read the whole story, that's when Job, after Job gave into justifying himself, then Allah I am came. And open his understanding to help him see where he fell. Confess and the fault. Right. Came to repentance. And, right. And as soon as Allah called, he was like, hey, I was wrong. He confessed it right off gate. He didn't justify it. Then Allah restored him and blessed him more than he was blessed before. Because he got, yeah, right. he got to that next point. So for us to see staying out of the anger, wrath, envy, hatred, sorrow doubtful mind all these works that we're discussing and to be patient because we see the patience is necessary as we learn now we have to perfect our faith job faith was perfected through his experience to learn not to give in to any other warm wood of anger but to stay long suffering really the long suffering right yeah. he needed that long suffering to be patient and wait it out and not to let pride have place in us or anger to justify anything, right. taking it all. Let me investigate an excuse the for something. Right. Yeah, let me investigate concerning the deity. This is good for me. David said, "It's good that I've been afflicted, that I may learn your statutes." Like, hey, thank right. you. Okay, what is it you want me to get here? Let me take this moment and be right here, right now, and not let this moment pass by, and not take the opportunity to work something that's true, to see, to get my experience. To know like what I'm believing in is right. I mean, not be distracted it by. Yeah, it really does, man. It let me not That's be distracted. That's why he said. That's what he Go literally ahead. said. Um, it says, "But they that have the fear of Elohim and investigate concerning the deity and truth and direct their hearts toward the Lord, perceive and understand everything that is said to them more quickly." So you perceive and understand the things that Allah I am saying to you more quickly too. Instead of getting down about it and getting beat up about it, you have to understand how Allah I am speaks to you. Allah I am may not speak to you the way that you may like to, that's pleasing to you and that's comforting to you. Like he may speak to you very, very straightforward or he may however he shows it in a dream or whatever the case is. He's communicating. You have to understand the communication, not to take it the way that you want to take it. If you perceive it as good and you're looking for the good and the understanding and you're not just going to take it and beat yourself down about it or or, or cast it away, just like it said, as soon as as soon as the um as soon as it's clear, what did it say? Sirach 40 and 7, when it is all safe, he awaketh and marvelous that the fear was nothing. So if you come out of it like that and you're like, yo, it was nothing, like, like man, I'm I'm casting that away. Like, then it makes it hard. Because then he has to communicate, he has to speak to you again. Then he has to speak to you again. Then he has to speak to you in another way. But all in all, Allah I am doesn't change for us. Allah I am doesn't appease us. And that's where the pride comes in. And it's going to be really good to when we really get into the pride lesson to really understand how we have to humble ourselves under the hand of Allah I am. And we have to understand him, not him understand us. And I think that's, a very big growth for a lot of people in their walk in their relationship with Allah I am, is to truly understand him and not for him to understand you
You're good, Casa. Yeah, investigate concerning the deity. Right. <laughs> Get to know him. Get to know who he right. truly is. To learn how Get to, to know how he speaks to you. Get to know how he speaks so that you can understand. Counting all things is good so you can actually see what is actually being brought to you for your help and for your growth and not just to beat you down. If you have that defensive mindset that everything is beating you down, everything is attacking you, it's hard to see. It's hard to grow. It's hard to receive things. So now we're getting to see how everything is starting to intermingle and how we have to hold fast to these certain things so that we can come out of them and grow. You got anything else, Cos? The scriptures confirm it. What he's doing is to help us. The way he speaks, whether by dream or vision or in the experiences. In Job 33 and 15, it said, In a dream, wait, sorry, verse 14, For Allah I am speaketh once, yea, twice. Yet man perceiveth it not, because as men, we wake up thinking the fear was nothing and we go on about our way. Right. Verse 15, in a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men in slumberings upon the bed, then he openeth the ears of men and sealeth their instruction. I thought this was showing, he telling you, he's instructing you like, hey, this is what's going on. These are the things that are affecting you. And for what purpose? Verse 17, that he may withdraw man from his purpose and hide pride from man. He's trying to bring us to humility. He's trying to bring us out of our own ways. If we could wake up from the slumber and see it like, hey, okay, you're showing me something that's going on so I could stop doing my own works and do yours. I could come out of pride and come to you, the meekness and loneliness of Yache. And it's interesting because when, when, when we read the shepherd of Hermes, that's exactly what happened to Hermes. Because the angel, when the angel Fenuel was speaking unto him, the angel of repentance was speaking unto him, the angel was very stern and that sometimes rough and that sometimes comforting at like, and he had to learn and take it. Like, because he didn't like it. Yeah. But he had to take it because the angels, the angel and Alahayim, they operate how they operate. We're the ones that get into our feelings about it. Like, they're very upright about the way that they operate. But we have taken on the ways of the world and have applied the ways of the world to Elohim. And for that, we fall. Because we're not letting go. We're not letting go to the ways of the world. And we're, we're actually, um, we want Elohim to uphold the ways of the world. Because that's what we know and that's what we're comfortable with. But that's not true. That's not so. Like We really have to come out of ourselves and our own righteousness or whatever we see as righteous or good in certain aspects when it comes to the world in relations to the world, the things that we've learned in the world. We have to really examine those things and inquire concerning the deity <laughs> mm -hmm. regarding true. those things that we're upholding and we're looking for Alahayim to operate in some of those same fashions when that may not be the case that may not be righteousness so it puts a lot of things in perspective because Alahayim keeps the law and he bears the fruits of the spirit of the law. He's not worried about the world or how things are in the world or how things, are, how we, 
what we've learned in the world or what we view as good in the world. For example, being assertive. Like we view somebody when they're speaking to us assertively that it ain't right. Or we get into our feelings about it, like the way that they were talking to me. But yet, there's certain instances where Yate was assertive, there's certain instances where the angels were assertive, especially when it concerned the law or it concerned somebody going off into an unclean spirit. They would then get more assertive. So for us, when that assertiveness comes, we automatically equate it to, oh, that's not right. Even Yache, they tried to reproach him when they were making merchandise of the um in the temple. In the temple. Yache turned over tables. But the reason for him turning the tables over was to get them out of there. Because they were doing something that wasn't right. To Alahayim. The zeal of thine house hath eaten me up. It's fulfilling prophecy. So we have to stop trying to make Alahayim what we want him to be. And once we do that and actually cleave to him and actually start applying what we're learning from him and applying it in our lives so that we can gain that experience and we can build that trust with Alahayim. It's, it's, we have to see where we are first. We have to accept where we are so that we can grow from where we are and that Alahayim will be with us. Good. The perfecting of our faith. All right. Can we touch on the uh, Testament of Dan, chapter 2, verse 1? And we're going to jump over to 5 and 1, please. Sure. Testament of Dan, chapter 2, verse 1. And now, my children, behold, I am dying, and I tell you of a truth, that unless you keep yourselves from the spirit of lying and of anger and love truth and long suffering, you shall perish. All right, so that's what's going to combat those two. Truth and long suffering is going to combat lying and anger. All right. Chapter 5, verse 1. Observe, therefore, my children, the commandments of the Lord, and keep his law. Depart from wrath and hate lying, that the Lord may dwell among you, and Belia may flee from you. Speak truth, each one with his neighbor. So shall ye not fall into wrath and confusion, but ye shall be at peace, having the Allahim of peace, so shall no war prevail over you. Love the Lord through all your life and one another with a true heart. I'm going to let you explain that one, Casa, because you touched on it earlier. If you don't mind. The part about the confusion? Yeah, that's the part you wanted to touch on. I see if I am giving me remembrance. From everything we discussed, actually, the end of it said, love the Lord all our life and one know the true heart. And that's the two greatest commandments in simplicity. We started off talking about how anger and getting wroth and getting in our emotions gets us into idolatry and fornication doesn't suffer us to have compassion upon our neighbor and it withdraws us from the law of Allah to blind the inclination of our soul. And also you have the spirit of hatred that works lawlessness against Allah sins against Allah and does not suffer us to hear the commandments concerning the love for our neighbor. 
So we have both these spirits hindering us from keeping the two greatest commandments. Okay. Here we are. But if we are lovers of truth and long suffering and speaking truth with our neighbors, of course, we're doing it in love. So it's in, in the right spirit. We'll actually fulfill both commandments. Mm -hmm. And everything that we talked about today as a whole, maybe it got to the point where like it was just a bunch of confusion. Hatred right. there, angers there, wrath there, lying, envy, envy. fornication, yeah. self-will, right. like right. the mental Lust. health issue. Yeah, right. everything's just flooding us. But if we want that peace of mind, God said, seek ye out the judgments of Ahaya, and you shall have be at peace, and your mind shall rest. Like, and Dan is confirming what he said. Like, we have to seek the law. The law has to be at the forefront of our mind, the first thing that comes first. Allahayam in all our thoughts, taking everything as good, knowing that all things are from Allahayam. Being careful for nothing. As Paul said, anything comes up with prayer and supplication. Make your request known to Allahayam. As Peter said, cast your burdens onto him. Tell him about it and make it make much more sense. Like knowing how serious this emotion is, these feelings are vexation, if you will, to get us to actually obey the law of the devil. It's that much more serious to real deal. Like, hey, nah, I am not getting into my passions about this. Allah, this is going on. And he said, speak ye truth, each one with his neighbor. Right. Tell Allah, I am the truth. Like, hey, this is bothering me, but I'm calling this out. This isn't right. I want to be in that perfect long suffering. Please, you praying, please get me out of this. You sit there and pray until this thing goes away. Until we, I'm temperate. Go sit up on my bed. I feel I'm angry. Go sit up on my bed. Go All keep right. the law. Pray to Allah, I am, tell him about it and be on guard against anger. I've told my Allah, I am, he's going to answer when he wills. I'm not doubting that when the doubtful thoughts come because the devil is going to keep coming. We have to guard ourselves. Remember to speak truth. No, Yache is Lord and Allah, I am, he will answer. And keep the law. Right. Like keep in all respects and wait and do not let that anger insinuate itself back in with some other thought to get me back in that passion. That's why I said, be ye angry and sin not. Right. But you got to keep that law. Don't let the law slip from your mind and let the anger take you. That's why God says, seek the judgments. Mm -hmm. Instead of fading off into the emotion, like, hold on, where's the right. judgment? I got to get understanding the law. Like, taking that time to know this is a moment of choice right now. Right. I got to get to the law. If I don't know the law, I say, get your counsel. Let your counsel be one in a thousand and make sure as a holy man that you know to keep the commandments. I got to go call my brother. We, I need to talk about this. Or I got to text him. Whatever I got to do. And this thought. It's staying right there until I get to discuss this. And I'm not going to move forward and go do anything else where it will have place for something else to just cause me to fall. Yeah. I know a lot of times what has gotten me is thinking I have to do something. Being concerned what people might say or how it will make me look instead of being content with what the law says. Right. I don't know the answer right now. Give me a moment. Let me get back to you. Right. I need some time. I got to pray about it. And being content, like I haven't sinned to Allah. I am a person may not be happy with me about it, right. but it's not about pleasing men. It's about saving my own soul <laughs> and pleasing exactly. Allah. I am. So he said, but you shall have peace. Having the Allah. I am of peace. So shall no war prevail over you. Honestly, that has helped my mental health. That contentment where right. frenzy is not much to think about. <laughs> right. 
I've done right. what the commandments said to do. Right. I know what the commandments say, and I'm fine with that. Yeah. I'm at peace with that. Like, so. Testimonies are sure. Chapter 5, verse 1. Observe, therefore, my children, the commandments of the Lord, and keep his law. Depart from wrath and hate lying, that the Lord may dwell among you, and Belia may flee from you. Speak truth, each one with his neighbor. So shall ye not fall into wrath and confusion, but ye shall be at peace, having the Allahim of peace, so shall no war prevail over you. Love the Lord through all your life and one another with a true heart. I'm going to let you explain that one, Casa, because you touched on it earlier. If you don't mind. The part about the confusion? Yeah, that's the part you wanted to touch on. I see if Elohim gives me remembrance. From everything we discussed, actually the end of it said, love the Lord all our life and one know the true heart. We started off talking about how anger and getting wroth and getting in our emotions gets us into idolatry and fornication doesn't suffer us to have compassion upon our neighbor and it withdraws us from the law of Elohim to blind the inclination of our soul. Okay. Here we are. But if we are lovers of truth and long suffering and speaking truth with our neighbors, of course we're doing it in love, so it's in, in the right spirit, we'll actually fulfill both commandments. Mm -hmm. And everything that we talked about today as a whole, maybe it got to the point where like it was just a bunch of confusion. Hatred right. there, anger's there, wrath there, lying, envy, envy. fornication, yeah. self-will, right. like the mental Lost health issue. issue. Yeah, right. everything's just flooding us. But if we want that peace of mind, God said, seek ye out the judgments of Ahaya, and you shall have be at peace, and your mind shall rest. Like, and Dan is confirming what he said. Like, we have to seek the law. The law has to be at the forefront of our mind, the first thing that comes first. Allahayam in all our thoughts, taking everything as good, knowing that all things are from Allahayam. Being careful for nothing. As Paul said, anything comes up with prayer and supplication, make your request known to Allahayam. As Peter said, cast your burdens unto him. Tell him about it and make it make much more sense. Like knowing how serious this emotion is, these feelings are vexation if you will, to get us to actually obey the law of the devil, it's that much more serious to real deal. Like, hey, nah, I am not getting into my passions about this. Allah, I am, this is going on. And he said, speak ye truth, each one with his neighbor. Right. Tell Allah, I am the truth. Like, hey, this is bothering me, but I'm calling this out. This isn't right. I want to be in that perfect long suffering. Please, you praying, please get me out of this. You sit there and pray until this thing goes away. Until we, I'm temperate. Go sit up on my bed. I feel I'm angry. Go sit up on my bed. Go All keep right. the law. Pray to Allah, Hayim, tell him about it and be on guard against anger. I've told my Allah, Hayim, he's going to answer when he wills. I'm not doubting that. When the doubtful thoughts come because the devil is going to keep coming, we have to guard ourselves. Remember to speak truth. No, Yache is Lord and Allah. I am. He will answer. And keep the law. Right. Like, keep in all respects and wait. And do not let that anger insinuate itself back in with some other thought to get me back in that passion. That's why I said, be ye angry and sin not. Right. But you got to keep that law. Don't let the law slip from your mind and let the anger take you. 
That's why God says, seek the judgments. Instead of fading off into the emotion, like, hold on, where's the right. judgment? I got to get understanding the law. Like, taking that time to know this is a moment of choice right now. Right. I got to get to the law. If I don't know the law, I say, get your counsel, let your counsel be one in a thousand and make sure as a holy man that you know to keep the commandments. I got to go call my brother. We, I need to talk about this. Or I got to text him or whatever I got to do. And this thought is staying right there until I get to discuss this. And I'm not going to move forward and go do anything else where it will have place for something else to just cause me to fall. Yeah. I know a lot of times what has gotten me is thinking I have to do something. Being concerned what people might say or how it make me look instead of being content with what the law says. Right. I don't know the answer right now. Give me a moment. Let me get back to you. Right. I need some time. I got to pray about it. And being content like I haven't sinned to Allah. I am a person may not be happy with me about it. Right. But. It's not about pleasing men. It's about saving my own soul <laughs> and pleasing exactly. Allah. Am. So he said, but you shall have peace having the Allah of peace. So shall no war prevail over you. Honestly, that has helped my mental health. That contentment where right. frenzy is not much to think about. <laughs> right. I've done right. what the commandments said to do. Right. I know what the commandments say, and I'm fine with that. Yeah. I'm at peace with that. Like, so. Testimonies are sure. All right. Let's touch on this envy. Okay. The Testament of God, chapter 7, verse 1, please. Sure. Testament of God, chapter 7, verse 1. If any man prospereth more than you, do not be vexed, but pray also for him that he may have perfect prosperity. Right. So that, that envy, envy flourishes when someone prospers more than you. Because through the arrogance, arrogance and envy, a person wants to be further than where they are. Even if they haven't put in as much work as the person that's prospering or hasn't been working as long, they still desire to be ahead. And that's where that pride or that arrogance comes in. And then the envy insinuates itself. It's true. It's true. You said it straightly from experience, the arrogance of wanting to be better, though I didn't put the work in, it'll cause vexation where you remember the these spirits blind the mind. So I wasn't seeing straight when I was doing it until mm -hmm. getting counsel and talking about it to realize, hey, what's going on here? Right. These spirits led me to be upset with Allah Hayyam. though I didn't do the work but I was upset because I wasn't where I thought I should be and then it goes into self-will All right it's like give me give me what I want though I haven't done the work to do it as Cain actually that's Cain wanted that's his thing to be is. yeah and wanted to be right. accepted though he didn't do us right right so them spirit, that's what they do. Right. Go ahead, brother. For well, so it is expedient for you. And if he be further exalted, be not envious of him, remembering that all flesh shall die and offer praise to Allah, who giveth things good and profitable to all men. I think there he was saying to make sure your prayer for that person is sincere and wholehearted. Mm -hmm. I was going to touch on it when you got done. Oh, sorry. No, go You're good, though. You're good. I'll continue. 
Seek out the judgments of the Lord, and thy mind will rest and be at peace. All right. So first, to combat the envy, you have to be intentional to pray for that person that they have perfect prosperity. And just like Brother Kostafo said, when it says, um, and offer praise to Allah who giveth things good and profitable to all men. You have to understand and be and be content with your portion that Allah has given unto you and focus on your own plowing. If you focus on your own plowing, you're not going to be worried about the next man because focusing on your own plowing is contentment. Well, so it is expedient for you. Like you, it's expedient that you pray and hope for them to do well because that's what's going to combat the envy. It's expedient. You have to do it. Because if you don't pray for them to prosper, then you're going to allow the envy to stay right where it is. And if he be further exalted, don't be envious of him. It's interesting because you're praying for him to have perfect prosperity. You can't be double-minded. Because your prayers, though Allah may be hearing your prayers to further exalt him, and then you're upset because he's further exalted, although you're praying for him. So your heart has to be right. You have to start getting your heart right. And you have to remember that all flesh is going to die. All of us are the same. Though Allah may have that man or that woman where they are in their life, it's not the end for anyone. You don't know the end of any man. And you don't know the end for yourself. You don't know where you're going to end up. You don't know where he's going to end up. You don't know where she's going to end up. So we all have to focus on our own plowing and be content therewith. And also praying for everyone else that they may prosper too. We can't be selfish. And seek out the judgments of the Lord. Keep Allah law first in your heart and in your mind. Because if you were keeping Allah law first, you wouldn't be envious. So that's why he's saying, seek out the judgments of the Lord. Because if you were keeping the judgments of the Lord, you wouldn't be envious in the first place. So you need to seek out the judgments of the Lord, and thy mind will rest and be at peace. Because you have to, you have to, you have to, to cleave unto those things so that you don't be taken away from by another law another law just like Paul said another law which is in my members the that war <laughs> that came to perspective today the law of sin Man. it's understandable now yes it is let's go we're gonna go to Shepherd of Hermes Mandate 10 chapter 2 verse 5 Okay, no problem. Let's touch on sad. Let's touch on sadness, since that was one of the things that Cain struggled with. All right. Shepherd of Hermas, Mandate Ten. Put away, therefore, from thyself sadness, and afflict not the Holy Spirit that dwelleth in thee, lest happily she intercede with Allah Hayyam against thee and depart from thee. All right. So. It's important that we put sadness away from us because the Holy Spirit dwells in joy. It's the opposite of what the Holy Spirit delights in. So the Holy Spirit's going to go tell on you. <laughs> Let's keep going. For the spirit of Allah Hayyam that was given unto this flesh Endureth not sadness, neither constraint. Mm. 
Therefore, clothe thyself in cheerfulness, which hath favor with Allah I am always, and is acceptable to him, and rejoice in it. For every cheerful man worketh good, and thinketh good, and despiseth sadness. Right. So we also got to clothe ourselves in cheerfulness, because sadness goes with anger and vexation and wrath and malice and envy and lying. Sadness is a part of it. You see all these different spirits that all go together. We got to really watch out for those spirits because these are the ones that like to click up. They like to roll in the group. They operate like a gang. All right. So we really got to stand aloof from these. It says, For every cheerful man worketh good, thinketh good, and despiseth sadness. So we really got to put on cheer. We really got to put on that joy. Now, what's going on with the sad man if we give in to the sadness? But the sad man is always committing sin. In the first place, he committed sin because he grieveth the Holy Spirit. So that's the first sin. Which was given to the man being a cheerful spirit. And in the second place, by grieving the Holy Spirit, he doeth lawlessness. Right? When the Holy Spirit departeth, he doeth lawlessness. Because he grieves the Holy Spirit in his sadness, and the Holy Spirit departs. And then he sins again because another spirit is dwelling there. And it bringeth forth other spirits. And he gets blinded. You heard Brother Cosmo? In that he doth not intercede with, neither confess unto Allah Hayyam. Mm. So when he's blinded, his prayers are hindered, just like we spoke of before. And he doesn't confess his faults, but they're justified. So we get to see how these spirits and the way that they operate in us causes us to not be able to serve Allah Hayyam. Go ahead, Brother Kassim. It was something I noticed, if you will. Go ahead, brother. And help me understand if I'm not seeing it right, please. It says, By grieving the Holy Spirit, he doeth lawlessness. Earlier on, we talked about the fact that to be lawless comes with being self-willed. Mm -hmm. So if I give in to my own desire, or if I'm thinking my own thoughts, as we know by precept already, I'm grieving the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And in that self-will, I'm not going to intercede with Allah Hayyam when something arises. I'm not going to ask him. I'm not going to make my request known unto him. But I'm going to abide in my own thoughts. I'm going to go by what's right in my right. own mind. You want to do what you want to do. Right. And of right. course, I'm self-willed. So I'm not going to, I don't want to see what I'm doing wrong because I want what I want. So I'm not going to confess anything to him. Right. I'm going to make it right somehow. What I'm doing is right because anger justifies whatever I'm doing. Justify it. Yeah. Right. And it all started from being sad because I didn't get what I wanted. Or right. what I was right didn't happen. <laughs> Perspective, man. <laughs> Praise Allah, I ever seen That's this Cain. <laughs> That's Cain. <laughs> Continue reading. For the intercession of a sad man hath never at any time power to ascend to the altar of Allah Hayyam. So then your prayers are hindered. And we went over why your prayers are hindered. So you can understand it and put it in proper context. All right. I see from the self-will aspect. 
a sad man. That's also a man that's self-willed. He's right. sad because he's not getting what if I'm that man, my prayers aren't being heard. Because I'm not sad coming in anger. Own. Yeah. Sad and then anger come in, just like Cain. Yeah. His countenance fell. All right. And then he was wroth. Right. In his feelings. So let us be encouraged to be of a sound mind, as these are the virtues that Allah hath given to us. Can we read 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, please? Sure. For Allah hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. Can we get the definition of sound mind, please? Sure. From G4994, discipline, that is self-control, sound mind. Right. So, Allah Hayyam gave us the spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind. That's the spirit that he's given us. So, we have the power to overcome. We just have to choose to use it. The power is within all of us. He's given us power of choice. That's power. He's given us the power of love. And he's also given us the power of a sound mind for us to have that self-control and be able to control our thoughts, to combat our thoughts or whatever may come unto our mind. He's given us that power. We just have to choose to use it. We have to understand to be able to use it. And now that we have the understanding, we can make the choice whether or not we're going to stand for Allah and his law or we're going to stand for the law of Belia. And that's the choice we're all going to have to make. So we hope everybody enjoyed this lesson. Kasi, you got anything before we get out of here? No, I think that was good. It's a good exhortation for closing. So we pray the high Allah for all the understanding and wisdom that he giveth unto us. And we pray it helps you in your walks. And we thank you for partaking in the lesson today with Hebrew Readers Church. We glorify Ahaya Lahayim and give praise unto our donor Yache and the Holy Spirit Wa Kodoshi. We thank you and we praise you. Kasa, you want to pray out of here? Sure. All right. Open my window. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptations, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Amen. Lord Yache, we thank you for your compassion upon us. We thank you for the edification, giving us understanding of the spirits at work against us, against you, even. And we pray that you strengthen your spirit in us, strengthen us in your power, in long-suffering, joy, forbearance, temperance, and strengthen us according to our inner man in that self-control and that love, that love for you, seeing you in everything that's before us. Strengthen our minds to be on guard against the darkness. Strengthen our minds to be attentive to the spirits at work. Strengthen us in prayer unto you. Strengthen us in faith. Strengthen us in good works, Lord Yache. Strengthen us where we lack. Show us where we lack. 
For you have said, where we are weak is where you are strong. Glorify your name in us, O Yache. Glorify Ahaya, Ashere Ahaya. Your Father, your Allahayim and our Allahayim. May you be exalted, Lord Yache, and may Ahaya Allahayim be magnified. We pray this lesson be edifying for all who hear and help for growth and faith. And belief in your name, Lord. May he be magnified. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Jav the Talam. Talam. <laughs> Hebrew readers, Hebrew readers, Hebrew readers, church.